like a big shot. Chevy tuned up like a NASCAR pit stop. Fresh paint job, fresh inside. Is the outside frame in the trunk wide. Or the rims big, do it right good. Lean back, right hand on the pine wood. Cream on the inside, clean on the outside. Cream on the inside, clean on the outside. Cream on the inside, clean on the outside. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream. Ice cream. Speaking at AKA, she's an alpha, but not around your boy. She get quiet around your boy. Hold on, don't know what you heard or what you thought about your boy, but they lied about your boy. Going dumb, and it's something idiotic about your boy. She wearing cheetah print. That's how bad she won't be spotted around your boy. I don't like no whips and chains, and you can't tie me down. But you can whip your loving on me, baby. Whip your loving on me. I'm vanilla baby, I'll, but I ain't no baby. She 28, telling me I'm still a baby. I get love in Detroit like Skiller baby. And the thing about your boy is, I don't like no whips and chains, and you can't tie me down. But you can whip your loving on me, whip your loving on me. Young M I S S I O N A R Y, he's sharp like barbed wire. She stole my heart, then she got archived. I keep it short with a Lord Farquaad. All the girls in the front row. All the girls in the third team. Titans fans on your feet. Let's meet your Corpus Christi Tritons. A defensive back from AM Kingsville, number one, Jordan Simonat. A linebacker from AM Commerce, number two, Joseph Butler. A quarterback from the University of Finley, number three, Jeremy Hunt. And linebacker and defensive line from Texas Tech, number four, Quentin Williams. A defensive back from West Virginia, number five, Jonas Belton. A wide receiver from Virginia Tech, number six, Hezekiah Grimm.
A linebacker and defensive back from Wheeling University, number 22, Jason Simon. Fullback from Virginia University of Lynchburg, number 23, Callaway Lee. A defensive back and wide receiver from East Central University, number 24, Josiah King. A defensive lineman from North Carolina A&T, number 33, Shamari Wallace. The kicker from Midland University, number 45, Cole Lundy. Defensive lineman from Millersville University, number 52, Chase Salasakis. An offensive lineman from Rangeville High School, number 72, Dylan Graham. On the offensive line from Texas College, number 73, Namdi Banks Eke. On the offensive line from Hutchison Community College, number 79, Austin Schofield. And a wide receiver from Presentation College, number 88, Lawrence Plummer. Your Titans are led by head coach Bradley Chavez. And Triton fans, please welcome our visitors tonight, the Cedar Rapids River Kings. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise and remove your hats for the presentation of the colors. The colors are presented today by the Sea Cadets. And remain standing for the singing of our national anthem, performed today by Cat Cooley. Big hand for Cat Cooley, and thank you to the Sea Cadets for their presentation of the colors.
Today's coin toss is done by birthday girl, Cat Cooley. All right, Tritons fans, get on your feet and make some noise for you. Corpus and Christi Tritons. The shores of the Corpus Christi Bay. The fans are rolling in for the next installment of the Corpus Christi Tritons Arena football team. I'm around Hammy alongside TJ Vela as the Tritons welcome in the Cedar Rapids River Kings. And TJ. We're back again, another exciting game. Last one, big one for the Tritons taking down the Amarillo Venom, 76 to 50. What can we expect from them today against these River Kings? You're gonna expect a lot of high powered offense, great defense, and just great football overall. It's gonna be very exciting, and the fans are ready for it. Everyone's piling in here in the American Bank Center, and where it looks like we're gonna get the ball first, so expect that Bradley Chavez high powered offense to get things started early. Oh, if you've been listening to us, we love that Bradley Chavez offense. Can't talk about it enough. It's high-powered. It's creative. He uses his imagination. So we're going to get underway here with the Tritons receiving the kickoff from the Cedar Rapids River Kings. The River Kings come in 0-1. They played two exhibition matches, which they took care of business quite well in teams outside of the American Indoor Football League. But they traveled to Harrisburg to take on the Stampede a couple weeks ago, uh, or just last week, and came up a little bit short after starting out hot. So they'll look to try and gain some momentum on defense to start, but the Tritons want that ball. And here we go. That's King taking it out. Gets across the 15 and brought down quickly by the River Kings. That's some good coverage there. And yeah, there was that one little crease. If he could have just broke through it, King could have. It would have been a huge return, but no great tackling there by the River Kings to bring him down and just hold on to him and let the rest of his game come and make a play on it. And now great field position here for Jeremy Hunt and his offense. And Jeremy Hunt had an electric game last, or two weeks ago, excuse me, against the Amarillo Venom, hooking up with his favorite wide receiver, Hezekiah Grimsley. Got a couple of new weapons out there today. We'll see how they start out. Looks like two receivers will go in motion to start. Under center, he's got a quick throw out wide. He'll pick up just about five yards. Yeah, that play right there is just to test the defense of the River Kings, see what they're going to do, see what they're going to bring. Just a good screen pass on the outside. And great tackle by number 19 to Sion Schumann over there on our near side. But a good gain to get the, the offense rolling after their long bye week in the past week. That's Orlando Doss coming up with the first catch. And he'll again start out in the backfield. Grimsley's on the line. And it looks like one of the new additions, Lawrence Plummer, is also in there. Hunt throws. It's intercepted. Inside the 10. 
And he'll be down inside the 10 there. Just a miscue there. It looked like Grimsley slipped on the pass. And that one is going to be intercepted by Schumann Dicion. Yeah, that's something we haven't really seen from Hunt all year. Turning the ball over, being careless with the ball that time. Like you're saying, just an unfortunate situation with the receiver slipping. Schumann in a perfect position there. Grabs the ball. Great return from him. And now for an offense who really struggled against Harrisburg last week. They have a great field position here on the 8-yard line of the Triton. And a great opportunity here for them to put the ball in the end zone and get some points early. Like TJ said, great start for the River Kings. Kaler Sullivan is the quarterback in the shotgun. High snap over his head. Triton's tr trying to get to the ball. Sullivan falls on it. And he's got it all the way back on the River Kings 17. And that's something we talked about all throughout pregame. The connection between the center and the QB and how much problems that created for the Cedar Rapids team last week against Harrisburg. Already great field position for them. That miscommunication, that terrible snap puts them far back and creates huge opportunity now for the Triton defense to make a stop for their offense. And that's how the Venom really put themselves back last game is creating their own mistakes here. Tritons didn't have to do anything there, and they've already pushed them back about 20 yards. Now it's second and long. Or second and goal, excuse me. Tritons jump quick. No flag. Sullivan quick throw long. It's intercepted at the five. By number five. And we do have a flag down. It looks like the Tritons did jump. That was a late flag. Didn't come out initially. But Jonas Belton, another new addition to this lineup for the Tritons, made the interception. Had two linemen for the Tritons not jumped off sides. So the River Kings live to see another down. You're completely right there, Ron. A completely late call by the ref on the far side. If you're going to call off sides there, you typically see it happen right as soon as the play starts. But the quarterback Sullivan there realizing it and just throwing it deep and realizing that if he threw a pick, this could happen and Free his team gets the ball back. Now, TJ, I didn't see a flag come out until after the ball was thrown. That was the crazy part. Sullivan's got the snap, corrals it, throws it out wide to Donovan Johnson who picks up a few. And that's the thing, if you're going to sit in zone coverage like the Tritons just did there, you're going to have to swarm on the ball quickly and make tackles just like the defender did there, number one, Jordan Seminat. But now it's still third and goal. You see the first down marker out there. They shouldn't be up. It's a long 20 yards before the River Kings get to the end zone and get a fresh set of downs as the official does take down the marker so that no one is confused. He must be able to hear us in the concourse <laughs> over there, you know? The River Kings will have two wide receivers to the left of Sullivan. Snapped. Sullivan. Pressured. Throws. Caught. Touchdown, River Kings. Well, they just took the momentum right back from the Tritons on an up and down series there. And there's a quick six points for Cedar Rapids. And the pocket was collapsing on Sullivan there. Great job by him just staying in there, staying within himself and delivering a strike to Robert Major on the inside slant route. Major did the rest there, running it into the corner of the end zone. And what looked like maybe the Tritons defense were gonna make a huge stop. Now, six points on the board for the River Kings, and for the first time this year, the Tridents are down. And they'll go for two, and there's a false start quickly as the O-lineman just blatantly moved. First touchdown of the game. Sometimes those O-linemen get a little too excited. Uh, appears so. That might be Ricky Neal Jr. on the edge. Or I apologize. The numbers are hard to see on these jerseys. <laughs> Trust me, no offensive alignment wants to be called out <laughs> on the false start. He's probably happy you got the number wrong. Long two-point conversion. Sullivan's got it. Has to roll out left. Tritons get to him. He throws to a wide open man, and it's good. River Kings pumped up on the sidelines. 
and just as they did against Harrisburg, start out with a quick lead. Sullivan there doing everything he can in the backfield, and his offensive line giving him a lot of time. Something we talked about was all those new additions that you referenced earlier and how we took out some defense alignment. Couldn't have hurt us right there. The Tritons D-line unable to make a play in the backfield. River Kings get the two-point conversion, and now they find themselves up 8-0 to zero with 9.34 left in the first. TJ, what's Coach Chavez saying to his offense as they go out there after uh, a quick interception in the first series? Forget about what happened in the last series. You know what you can do and just play how you play. It was a fluke that you threw the interception, Jeremy Hunt. Let's come back, remain focused, get back to our strategy. It's all going to work out, but we need to put the ball in the end zone here to get that momentum back. Well, we'll try and do that here. Kickoff is low and kicked to the sidelines. Has to be returned, picked up quickly by King. Gets over the 20 and brought down. Josiah King, the local product, went to King High School just down the road here in Corpus Christi. Yeah, that was a good job by King there, just getting the ball that kind of nestled into the corner and right next to the wall there. King getting the most out of it that he could and putting his team here in good field position. Here we go again for the Tritons. We can't talk about it enough. Their offense is very creative and has been very effective in their exhibition games and first official game. We have a timeout here by the officials. Not too sure why they're calling a timeout there, Ron, but nonetheless, Coach Chavez is going to use this opportunity to come talk to his team and remind them exactly what we just referenced. Hey, you've been in this position before. You know how to play football, you know what you need to do here. Let's move the ball down the field and put it into the end zone. And they have to have a lot of faith in Coach Chavez. He has a lot of uh, playing and coaching career. He actually played arena football right here in Corpus Christi for one of the uh, former teams we had here, the Corpus Christi Fury back in 2013. And that's why, yes, he coached Emilius, he did all that, but that's why everyone was so excited when he came in to coach here again with the Red the Trident because he was essentially uh, guy who became a local product who became a Corpus Christi native through all of those experiences well here we go again as the series will begin Hunt under center has one receiver long he wants rolls out and he's got room to run quickly brought down by the linebacker that's a great open field tackle but Hunt close to the first down marker yeah, Jonathan Jones, the linebacker there for the River Kings, doing a good job of tackling the speedy Hunt. But that's the big thing about Hunt. If he doesn't see anything open within the first three to five seconds in the pocket, he's going to tuck the ball and he's going to put his head down and run. And a great decision there, getting nine yards on the QB keeper and putting his team now onto the side of the River Kings field. Well, that just seemed like a one-option route there for Hunt. If it wasn't open, he took off and made the great decision. Second down and short, Hunt. Has pressure, rolls, throws to an open man. Plummer gets inside the five. And just another great job by Hunt going through all his progressions in the field, his offensive line, and his running back, giving him a lot of time in the backfield to be able to make those reads. And once he found his guy, hit him on the hitch route and put Plummer in great position for yards after catch. And now at the four-yard line, the Tritons need to punch the ball in here. And my mistake, that was actually Langford on the catch. Another new addition to this roster this week. The rosters do change week to week as a lot of these players, there's a pool for each team. But the Tritons have a good opportunity here inside the five. Hunt with the ball. Held onto it, maybe a little too long, but either way, Hunt is in the end zone. I don't see a flag, that's gonna stand. Touchdown, Tritons. It looked like Langford May have gone off sides with his early run, but no flag came down. The Tritons will take that. They'll take the no flag. Great play call. You typically never see in arena football a run call to the left side to the boundary. Uh, and right there, Hunt doing his best job. Got a great block from the running back, number 23, Callaway Lee. Runs it into the end zone for a Triton touchdown. And interesting here, Chavez is going to go with the kick here for one, trusting his kicker, Lundy. Snap is back, corralled. It's up and it's good, all right. Lundy already improving from last week, had some trouble kicking, but he, made, he makes it count. It is eight to seven, River, River Kings, 
Thank you all for joining us on our local station, KDF, and YouTube. We'll be right back on KDF. Stick with us on YouTube. Yeah, that was something Lundy was practicing all pregame, was just those extra point kicks because we knew everything that happened last week or two weeks ago that that was the big question coming in. Obviously, he's worked on it, and Coach Chavez knows that. That's why he trusts him in that situation to make that happen. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting decision. He's usually very aggressive with his play calling there, would love to go for two. Uh, I'm very curious why he chose that. Do you any any idea why? I think, too, uh, the, the, something else that goes along with that decision is the trust in his defense. He knows his defense is going to get him the ball back. He knows that that was just great offensive play by the River Kings in their last drive. Can they sustain that? Can they keep that going? That's something that I think Coach Chavez doesn't believe in. He believes in his defense more to make stops compared to the River Kings' offensive ability to not let that happen. And the Tritons really proved that they can push this O-line around. They got to the backfield quite a bit, but give credit to the quarterback for the River Kings. Sullivan doing the most to extend the plays, and it paid off with their first touchdown, so he'll have a second chance here. It's a long kick into the end zone, bobbled but corralled. And here we go, out across the 15, hit, and he goes down. And Nick Smith coming across the field there to tackle Tremont Bright. Good job by him because it looked like Bright had a lane until Nick Smith just came in with the arm tackle. And we'll see here. You just mentioned it. The O-line was doing a good job. We were getting pressure from the defensive front. But the O-line was doing just enough to prevent Sullivan getting sacked. I don't think as this game goes on, they'll be able to hold on to that line. And we're going to see a lot more sacks happen for the Tritons. Sullivan will stay in the shotgun. Two receivers to his left. Looks. Pump fakes. Has to roll left. Throws now. It's caught. Near midfield. And quickly punished by Jordan Seminox. Yeah, Donovan Johnson there. The receiver making that catch. It's only six yards and he had to earn it the hard way. Immediately thrust into the wall upon that catch but again we're seeing it a lot already Sullivan using his legs to extend plays and really force the secondary for the Tritons to have to stay on their assignment for much longer a lot of these catches that the River Kings right receivers are getting are only because Sullivan's having to move around and they're just right out there uh, just freestyling their routes really looks like Nick Smith will be the blitzing linebacker on this one he goes under center Sullivan handoff to Bright and he's got the first down and more. It's just a great play call there from Coach Clark on the River Kings side. We're blitzing in the A gap on the right on the right side, and they ran it to the other side. So it's just a great play call there to get some quick yardage and a fresh set of downs. That's the first time we see Sullivan go under center. And if you notice, he is getting his play calls from his coach on the field. That is one of the unique rules about arena football, especially this league, is each team can have a coach on the field as long as they're 10 yards behind the play. Sullivan goes back to shotgun. Low snap, picked up quick and thrown, and it's incomplete as Sullivan takes a big hit. Fans are loving that one. And that's the issue when you have all these miscues with snaps. Obviously, it can create turnovers, but if the quarterback is able to make a play on the ball and get it out, more often than not, the defense is already going to be right up in your face, and that time Sullivan, nowhere to go. Uh, Triton defender right up in his grill, putting him down into the ground. And you're right, the crowd is into it. They love that action there. We've got a good crowd right in front of us, TJ. Definitely right behind the benches. That's the best part of this. Sullivan, one in the backfield, and two receivers go. Pitches to his left to Bright. Tackled quickly just over the 15. Great coverage by the D-line for the Tritons. Yeah, right there. I mean, the Tritons offense, they had the numbers on the field side, but Bright not able to use his speed as the speed of the defense showed there. The pursuit from them to take those angles and make sure that Bright's not going to be able to turn it upfield was impeccable. And right there, a great stop to force a third and long. Appears to be third and six for the River Kings. If you're just joining us, about four minutes left in the first quarter. River Kings lead 8-7. to seven. They are on their second series. One receiver in motion. Sullivan's got the snap. Pressured. Hit in the backfield. Goes down. 
as his helmet pops off, two Tritons get to him. Jamari Wallace finding his way finally to Sullivan. We've been waiting on it all day. We knew that the pressure, and we've seen it, that the pressure has gotten there, but just hasn't been able to make a play. That time Sullivan tried to use his legs, but Wallace quickly goes right up on him, brings his legs down, and gets the huge sack. And because Sullivan's helmet came off, he's going to step off the field for a little bit and... For a limited time, only at Taco Palenque. Hey, what's up, Tritan fan? It's me, Nate, from Nasex Club. And Nasex Club is dedicated to serve kids in foster care and kids in, within the community. And our main focus is new and valuable resources like art, science, sports, and education. And let's continue to be the change. Go to nasexclub.org to become a sponsor and to join my team. All right, so Verlin Reed will be in at quarterback for this play. He's in the shotgun. River Kings need to get to the six. They are on the 19. Receivers clearly off sides on that one. Some communication problems there for the River Kings, and they'll be backed up. And that's the issue. When you bring in a new quarterback like Reed in that type of situation, sometimes the snap cadence is off. Sometimes the receivers are going to jump it, and a huge mistake there will push the River Kings back five yards and make this fourth down play even longer. For the Tritons defensively, you have to guard the sticks. Do not let any play get close to that first down marker. And you give the ball back to your offense with a lot of time left here in the first to make something happen. And next to a turnover, that's the worst thing that could happen for a new quarterback to come in and just be rattled in the first play. And Reed is someone that we saw last week against Harrisburg. He did all right stepping in, but did have some issues with the snap cadence. He had some issues with turnovers. And so we'll see here in this situation how he performs. He's in the shotgun. He's got two receivers in motion to his right. He's got it on target now. Long throw downfield. Caught inside the 10, but it's going to be short of the first down. And that should be the Tritons' ball. And it is. Well, great execution by the River Kings. Just a yard or two short. Tritons bending but not breaking on that play. But see, in that situation, that's why it's so important to know where the sticks are, know where the first down marker is, because as a defender, you know you can let that receiver make that catch, make that play on the ball. Just make sure you bring him down before he gets to the six-yard line. And right there, our cornerback did. Great job by him, and it is officially the Tritons' ball. I don't know why there was so much confusion. It's clearly not at the six-yard line. I think just because no one was standing there near the sticks and it was falling over, and there was just a lot of confusion because of that. This is a unique game for those who are being introduced to arena football for the first time. A lot of different rules, but it's more high-flying, a lot of scoring, big hits into the walls. And that's why the fans come out here and love it. And, of course, last two weeks ago, the last game, we saw fans interacting with the players because the, they sit right behind the benches here. Yeah, we saw a lot of fan interaction, both positive and negative. You have the Tritons throwing the, the football up with fans, and then you have the chirping over on the away side. So it's very entertaining on both sides. Tritons third series. Hunt. Balls tipped at the line and falls incomplete. And that was just a great job there by the defense alignment, getting a hand up and deflecting that pass out of the reach of the receiver for the Tritons. Hunt hasn't really had to worry about that. His offensive line has really gave him a lot of time throughout the season, and they've kept the defenders' hands down low, and so he hasn't really had to worry about tipped balls at the line of scrimmage. That was Ricky Neal Jr. on the right side of the line, and their roster lists him having experience with the Minnesota Vikings in the NFL. Hunt, two receivers on both sides. Drops back, has time, has to scramble now. Receiver comes back to make the catch. That's number eight, Orlando Doss. And just a great job by Doss there. He was running a slant route, saw his quarterback Hunt was in trouble, came back to the ball. That's the first lesson they teach at wide receiver school. If you have your quarterback in trouble, come back to the ball. You're more often than not going to get a pass. And right there, great job by Doss executing and making this a much more manageable third and short. 
third and one. Hunt's got one in the backfield with him. I wouldn't be surprised if he hands it off. Or take it himself. A little bush push gets him the first down. Coach Chavez didn't want to mess around there. He knows his quarterback. He has a big body, and he's able to just go through the offensive line. And so right there, Coach Chavez just electing to keep it in the hands of Hunt and to get the first down and that fresh set of downs. Triton's now getting in a rhythm after the interception on their first series. We were under one minute left in the first quarter, though. Hunt goes under center. River Kings not blitzing. Still get to Hunt. And he's got to throw it away. Just a three-man rush, but we know we have a flag. And it might be on Cedar Rapids just trying to do too much. But that was Malik Allen in the backfield applying pressure to Hunt. Great job by him getting around the right tackle for the Tritons. But the way it's looking, it might be on Cedar Rapids. Yeah, I'm wondering there if the linebacker came out of the box on that play. And he may have been there in coverage after first going to show, show and run. With a late penalty like that, that's probably what you're going to get. Well, five yards for the Tritons up to midfield. 37 seconds still left in the first quarter. And they like to take a shot from here. We haven't seen the Grimsley and Hunt connection yet. I think in this type of situation, 25 yards from the end zone, you could see something like that. Doss has got a lot of the targets so far. He's out here on your near side. Grimsley is right next to him, going to go in motion. Ball snapped. Hunt, long throw to Doss. Just missed him. But we called it there. Chavez likes to take a shot when he gets into that position. And especially because he knew it was first and five, so he was going to have a second to five situation either way if that pass was incomplete. And so here now in this situation, you'll likely see his original call. And honestly, he might go deep again. You really never know with Coach Chavez and what he wants to do. Orlando Doss getting another good target. We didn't see a lot of him in the last game, but I think that just comes with experience now as more weapons are coming for the Tritons. But that'll be the end of the first quarter. We will take a break over on KDF, but stick with us here on YouTube, and we'll continue the action. All right, so first quarter. It is still 8-7, to seven, River Kings. The game has slowed up just a little bit. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for the start of the second quarter. Corpus Christi Tritons trail by one against the Cedar Rapids River Kings, eight to seven. Tritons ball here, Hunt wants to go long again. It's floating up there. We got some contact before the play, but ref's gonna say that was not catchable. Just a very shocking first quarter, I think, Iran, just with how this game has played out so far. I don't think we expected the Tritons to only score seven in the first. We definitely didn't expect a turnover from Jeremy Hunt. And for right now, offensively, we just haven't seen the same Tritons offense that we've seen the past two weeks. The River Kings D-line seems to be causing some problems, even with just a three-man rush. Although not getting to Hunt, still giving him some concern. And uh, Tritons not able to make the plays they did in the last match. Third down here in five. Two receivers to the Hunt's left. 
He's got one across the middle, but he's taken down to the backfield. Big hit for the River Kings. Back to towards the original line of scrimmage, and it's going to be a fourth and long for the Tritons. Back in their own territory. And that's Malik Allen again on the sack, coming around the right tackle and making a great play on Jeremy Hunt. And Hunt, who really hasn't been sacked a whole lot this year, only sacked once against the Amarillo Venom a few weeks back, has already been hit multiple times, sacked once. He's not feeling too comfortable in the pocket right now, and that could spell trouble for the Tritons if that is not fixed. Well, I think we could start the old debate, rest versus rust here, with the Tritons having two weeks off. Almost stripped in the backfield. Long pass is broken up at the end zone. That's Grimsley being targeted there, and it'll now be a turnover on downs. Here come the River Kings in good position to go for another score. Yeah, right there, Jeremy Hunt and his offense just trying to make something happen. You can't putt in arena football like we've been over. And in that situation, trying to go for it all and get the touchdown, but since we didn't get it, 19 yards now separates the River Kings from another touchdown. Boy, the DBs for the River Kings are having themselves quite a good game so far, TJ. And that was the big question coming in, too, on the defensive side. Last week against Harrisburg, the secondary for the River Kings were getting burnt on a lot of deep routes, and so that must be something they went over a lot in practice because they've done a great job covering it so far. Triton's back on defense. Sullivan's going to go under center. Ran the ball last time. Pitch a little unorthodox over a lineman to get to his man. Yeah, and that play right there, Sullivan's just trying to do the shovel pass and hit his receiver in stride, but I don't think either of them were really timed up too well. And, and that play right there, only a yard gained, and the Tritons didn't have to do much to defensively there to stop it. I mean, that could have ended disastrously for Cedar Rapids. I, I don't remember ever seeing a pitch go over a lineman. Sullivan will go back to shotgun here. Good snap. Flush to the right throw, and the receiver wasn't ready. Sullivan, again, takes a big hit from Alasakis. Yeah, right there, just again, we're seeing a lot of these routes taking a long time to develop. That hitch route there on the outside still hadn't even hit their break, and Sullivan, you're right, slow to get up. Here comes Reed, the second-string quarterback coming in. Both of these quarterbacks here in this contest getting hit and getting hit hard. Yeah, Sullivan looks a little shaken up. He's going to take a seat on the bench as he's trying to recover from that last hit. Reed will try and get some momentum quickly. Last time he came out, an immediate penalty on the River Kings. And Reed has also played a little wide receiver for these guys as well. And now we've got a delay of game. So again, Reed comes out in a penalty quickly for the River Kings. And if you're the Tritons defense, you want to keep letting that happen. Get Sullivan in, get him out on an injury, and then bring Reed in because you're 2-2 two, two right now in bringing him in and getting a penalty that moves the River Kings offense back. But if you're Coach Clark or the River Kings, that just has to make your blood boil. You have great field position. You're working towards trying to increase your lead and penalties, bad calls, and just hurting your team here. You hate to attribute it to the young season. It's only their second actual game in the AIF. And there's some movement on the line for both teams. And we'll see if they want to say it's a false start or encroachment. The way the River Kings are pointing, they're thinking it's an encroachment, and it is. So they'll move back up to the original line of scrimmage. But still third down. So the Tritons defensive line now with two big offsides penalties that have hurt the team. We had the interception earlier that we weren't able to capitalize on. And then now in that situation, five yards gained for the River Kings. The Tritons have a lot of communication going out on the field right now as they're going to try and get home on Reed here and force it fourth and long. Two receivers in motion. Here we go. Reed. Throws towards the end zone, broken up. That's Fabian McNichols. Yeah, McNichols there had no 
way to not make a play on that ball. He was right on the back of the receiver. All he had to do was stick his hand out and knock it down. Great job by him. And now fourth and nine. That was Flanagan Shiloh who was targeted on the pass. He was looking for a flag, but McNichols looked to play that one very clean. Again, a fourth down force by the Tritons. Reed's going to need some magic here as the Tritons are going to be sending four. Here it comes. They get to the backfield, but he gets it off. It's caught around the 12-yard line. And that might be short of the first down stick. I think it's definitely short. And yes, the far side ref indicating that it's going to be Triton's ball. And another huge fourth down stop where, again, knowing where the sticks are, knowing where you have to be defensively, comes up big for the Tritons. Defensive coordinator J.A. Anderson coming out strong there and really hyped for his team and his defense and making two huge stops. And now let's see what the Tritons offense can do, Iran. I'm a little worried with how sluggish it we've come out so far. Yeah, how about us tripping over our own shoelaces? We talk about the offense so much, and this has been a defensive game. And it's been a very quick game at that. We're already 8 minutes, 57 seconds left in the second, and we're only 30 real minutes <laughs> into this contest. Well, we're going to get a timeout here as... These guys are going to talk it over. The Tritons haven't had as much success on the offensive side as we've seen in the past in their exhibition and their game uh, against the Amarillo Venom, who, by the way, played their third game of the season earlier this Hi, this is Casey, and I would like to help you love where you live. My apologies. The Amarillo Venom played the Columbus Lions for the second time this season, and they, they had a rough outing once again, TJ. Columbus Lions took care of the Venom once again in, in an even bigger fashion than the first time. But we're back here with the Tritons and River Kings. Hunt's got the ball. There's a flag down, and he's just got to throw it away. And yeah, we're likely going to be seeing holding called on that one. I think that's Malik Allen again on the top side of the line. And no, it's actually going to be the formation issues that we've heard on the previous side. Okay, so that's been a problem for the River Kings now twice. They're still trying to sort some things out. And that's one of those situations where as a linebacker, if you're saying you're going to blitz, or as a defensive lineman, if you know you can only be in certain gaps, you have to play that assignment. Because if you don't, it hurts your team here, gives the Tritons free, uh, free five yards. And if we've seen anything with what Coach Chavez and what he's going to do on free plays, we may see a deep ball here. Here you go, first down. Ball's handed off and quickly King goes down. Backfield was disrupted very quick. Yeah, right there, just nowhere to go for King. A great job by the D-line of the River Kings just getting through the line, making a play on the ball, and making it very easy for their linebacker core to not have to worry too much. That's Jonathan Jones out of Mississippi College. And you know what? The River Kings have had their, their chance to get this right. They had two exhibition games where they only gave up 14 and 6 points. Yeah, but again, one of those teams didn't even have a real name. It was just Missouri. <laughs> Touche. Hunt dropping back. He's got time. He's got a man wide open. It's Doss. Doss across the 15, 10. And hit. Out of bounds by his counterpart, the other number eight. And right there, finally, Hunt had enough time in the backfield to let all of his receivers' routes develop. He went through his progressions, and finally we see what can happen when all of that happens and comes together. Doss open over the middle, huge yards after catch, and now the Tritons threatening here at the nine-yard line for the River Kings. That's the first time we've heard the crowd in a, in a while here as the offense gets moving inside the 10-yard line now under seven minutes until halftime. Tritons down one. Hunt's got the snap, quick throw to the right. 
and Doss taken out around the line of scrimmage. Yeah, screenplay over on the right side, but just a great job defensively by number 17, Terrell Carey, getting over there, not letting the offensive lineman get to him, and making a great play on the ball for no gain for the Tritons. Tritons trailing eight to seven, an unusual score that we aren't used to seeing with the Tritons. But hey, this comes with the territory. Every game is unpredictable. And it looks like, yeah, the Tritons were trying to figure out a game plan there and the play clock ran out on them. That's one of those situations where it's just so difficult as a quarterback to keep that in the back of your mind, especially when you think it's more so a timeout. And there hurts the Tritons, but luckily for them, we know what they can do, especially with more room now to work with. Here now 14 yards to the end zone. Well, up here, Coach Chavez was giving Josiah King some special instructions there. Here's Hunt with some time. Has to scramble. He gets hit and goes down around the 22-yard line. The Tritons just keep going backwards. Now Billy Masanger, he was the QB spy on that one. Great job by him not falling for the pump fake from Hunt, staying on him and making a great play, the great solo tackle to keep Hunt from doing anything with the ball there. And what started out as a first and goal at the nine-yard line has now turned to third and goal from the 22-yard line. And it's, it's not looking good right now, Ron. Yeah, like you mentioned, third and long. Those DPs have just had the wide receivers wrapped up. Not many plays where Hunt feels comfortable throwing it downfield. Well, and then along with that, too, he's having to move around a lot. Last game against the Venom, he wasn't having to do too much scrambling or anything like that. All right, well, we'll step aside during this timeout on KDF. We'll be right back. as the Titans talk this one over, TJ. What are we going to be looking for on a third and long play like this? I know you still got two plays because I doubt that Chavez is going to go for the kick. No, in this situation here, I think Chavez is just trying to get the ball back to at least the 10-yard line. Anything closer than that would be great. He's just trying to get back as many yards as possible so he can make that fourth down play, the one where he puts the ball in the end zone. Just under five minutes here. This game is flying by. You're new to the arena football game again. This is a running clock game until you get to the final minute of each half. But because this has been a pretty defensive game, it's flying by. Hunt takes the snap. Pressure in the backfield, releases. Got his man, oh, had a hand on it. Langford almost making the play on the ball there. Just had a great defensive play there by the River Kings secondary. You thought maybe he was going to come down with it. But no, unfortunately for the Tritons, not the case. All right, fourth and long. So Chavez elects to go for it all on that play. And now you really have to go for it all. So the defense knows what's coming, right, TJ? Yeah, they know that all they have to do now is just guard the end zone. Don't let anyone get behind you. Again, easier said than done. Grimsley and Doss are going to be the men in motion. All three receivers to his right. Hunt to the end zone. Deflected and falls. That could have been intercepted. But either way, it's going to be River King's ball in, again, good field position. And fortunate they didn't pick it off there. No. They ever, that's basically what, you know, what happens there. I think Hunt was maybe looking for an interception there because it turns into a punt-like situation where the field would switch and everything could happen. But now, after that, We want to welcome Kings. back in everyone on KDF. I'm Iran Hammy alongside TJ Vela. You're watching the Corpus Christi Tritons take on the Cedar Rapids River Kings. It is an 8-7 to seven game in favor of Cedar Rapids still. Low scoring unusual for the Tritons so far from what we've seen in their exhibition and uh, regular season games. 
Reed's back in at quarterback. Shotgun, two receivers in motion. He's got three minutes to work. Quick pass out to the left and knocked out immediately. Yeah, great job by Jordan Seminat there, breaking on the route and making a great tackle on the receiver, number seven, Donovan Johnson. But we'll see here the third time the Tritons defense has had to go out there and try and make another stop to get the ball back to their offense. Hopefully third time is not the charm for the River Kings. And they're going to take their time with this one as well. They're in no rush. Now as they get up to the line, under three minutes to play. Reed's got one in the backfield with them, two receivers in motion. Handoff. Hit quickly. Nuh-uh. You got nowhere to go. And that was Nick Smith coming right over the top. His defense alignment did a great job stalling the offensive line, not allowing them to get up to the next level. And Nick Smith coming right over top of him, making the play in the hole. Huge stop at the line, and now third and ten for the River Kings. At this point, they're just trying to take the clock down so the Tritons don't have another attempt should the River Kings turn it over on downs. And with how creative Chavez can get, they can score quickly. We haven't seen it like that today, but it is his forte. Reed throws over the middle to a wide open receiver, but it's dropped. What are they going to say? They're saying it's a fumble. The ref at the top of the screen threw the card down. It's going to be Triton's ball if this stands. Well, that would be just what the Tritons need right now. They've had no other momentum in this second quarter. Oh, they're calling it an incomplete pass. And so that's the situation where the head line judge just overrules everyone there, and it did look like it was just going to be incomplete. But as a Triton fan, you hope that maybe they were going to say he turned up field with the ball, and that's when he lost control of it. From our perspective, it looked like Shiloh came back to the ball and made a turn, but maybe he never actually possessed it. It's fourth down for the River Kings. He's going long to the end zone. Caught! Touchdown, River Kings. And that's the same guy we thought fumbled the ball earlier, Shiloh Flanagan. Just making a great play on the ball. Reed just throwing it up and letting his receiver work. And right there, the secondary for the Tritons is not able to make a play on it. And a huge score with 118 left in the second quarter that now gives a seven-point lead to the River Kings. No, well, that is huge for the River Kings, who have held the Tritons to just seven points, only scoring once in the first quarter. Nothing here in the second quarter as we are about to hit the one-minute warning. Shiloh did great to go up high and pinpoint that ball over the DB. And now Reed will take the snap for the two-point conversion. Quick throw. Incomplete. So it's River Kings 14, Triton 7 with a minute 18 to go. We'll be right back on KDF. Well, TJ, as we stay here on YouTube, Chavez has a minute 18 to work with. He's been shut down pretty much so far this, this half. Hunt's been pressured a lot. What differently do they need to do here on this essentially two-minute drop? Two minute. Really, it just comes down to the O-line play at this point. It's just about giving Hunt enough time to let all of these creative Chavez plays develop and let our receivers get behind the defense. So far, we just haven't been able to do that. The defensive line for the River Kings has done a great job of pressuring Hunt, not allowing him any time to throw, and it's the reason why we find ourselves down seven points here late in the second quarter. Spoken like a true O-lineman. Trust me, I, I'm well aware of everything that can happen <laughs> in an O-line film room, and right now it's not looking too good for the boys in blue. Welcome back on KDF. River Kings get the crucial score late in the second quarter to go up seven. And now they kick off to the Tritons who have a minute 18 to work with to try and capitalize on some momentum heading into the halftime. It's going to be a low wobbly kick that bounces out of bounds around the 18-19 yard line. 
Talking about getting close to the action there. That fan could a, a line <laughs> drive kick right into his lap. Well, remember last game, the fan who uh, kept giving the ball back? Yeah, I don't know. He did the same thing there. <laughs> Do we not know that with the price of admission, you are able to keep the ball and go home with it? Or at least get it signed when you meet the players after the game. Yeah, that's one of the cool things we do for the Tritons. All the players, the mascot, everyone goes out and meets the fans and the concourse of the American Bank Center. Ball spotted at the 17. And that's going to be an offsides on the River Kings. Yeah, we've talked about Malik Allen all night, how he seems to have a step ahead of the offensive lineman in front of him, but there... A big reason why he had a big step was because he was offside. Oh, yeah, you can't do that. Okay, so with only taking four seconds off the clock, they'll move up at least five yards here. But the clock continues to run, and now we are at the one-minute warning, TJ. Yeah, I was surprised we weren't seeing a little more urgency there from the Trions, but I think because Coach Chavez knew the one-minute warning was coming, he was just going to let... His offense get a breather before they really start turning up the speed here with one minute left in the second. Well, very interesting game here for the Corpus Christi Tritons who are 2-0 on the season. Very different from what we saw against the Venom, but the Venom are a different team as they, uh, again, have are looking for their first win, and so are the River Kings here leading the Tritons 14-7. What have you noticed so far that the River Kings are thriving on, TJ? Right now, it's just their defense. Their defense has really kept them in this contest and given their offense a lot of opportunities to score. I think, though, collectively as a team, Coach Clark and his River Kings are really just making the decision to play great football and try and get their first win in the conference. We have not seen Hezekiah Grimsley make a play yet. There's a high throw by Hunt as he's hit and goes down. Well, there's that defensive line again for the River Kings, causing havoc. Yeah, that havoc made Hunt miss a wide-open plumber who, after the hitch route, he would have had a lot of room to run over there on the far side. They're knocking on the door and trying to take down Hunt for the third time this half. Hunt gets the direction from Chavez. They're still up there. 22-yard line with second and five. Hunt. He's got room. Throws it. There's a first down. And they got to go quick. Yeah, they okay. got to go quick, but there's a flag on the play, and it might be bringing it back. It's a holding on the Triton. And they just cannot catch a break today. They're just punishing themselves. Yeah, the offensive line play has been very subpar today, and it's cost the Tritons opportunities that time it cost us a first down because of the holding and puts us back way back there in the field of play. Well, they've got to get to the River Kings 23. But right now they're on their own 13. And now we'll see if Coach Chavez even wants to test it with 45 seconds left in the second corner. River Kings have been tested and handled everything Coach Bradley Chavez has thrown their way so far. Hunt got to come up with something here. Here's a wide open man. That's Grimsley finally. Grimsley making the footwork work. Grimsley gets to the 21 of the River Kings. Clock will stop on the first down. And that's the danger if you leave Grimsley open. In the open field, he has the ability to make men miss and get a lot of yards after catch. We saw it there. Huge first down for the Triton, who can now take some shots in the end zone with 27 seconds left. Appears the DBs were playing a little bit longer there, and they took advantage of the short yardage. And they get to the backfield, but Hunt's got the throw off. It's Grimsley again. Off the wall and into the end zone. Fancy footwork, 4-6. Tritons, touchdown. Hezekiah Grimsley on another crossing route, but another flag on the field. It might be bringing this one back. Who knows? We'll see here in a second. Touchdown's going to stand. Roughing the passer. So a great job by Hunt there then, staying in even with the pressure coming. 
and then an even better job by Grimsley. He had the crossing right over the field, and we just saw it on the previous play. You alluded to it right there on the, on the touchdown call. Fancy footwork puts him into the end zone, dodging and weaving through this River King defense, and a huge score, Aron, a huge score with 20 seconds left here in the second quarter. Boy, Grimsley did just about everything. Duck, dip, dodge, dive, and dodge. Yeah. And we were waiting for it. You've been saying it all game. He hadn't had a catch. He hadn't really made anything happen. <laughs> right there, two plays back to back. It's in, and we're it in the end zone. It was reverse psychology, TJ. You're trying to voodoo it. That's all you're trying to do. You're trying to jinx it. I believe in that <laughs> atmospheric karma. <laughs> I hear you, man. I hear you. And we got a flag on the field during the two-point conversion. And Cedar Rapids not helping themselves here with 20 seconds left in the half. Can I say it's been an offensive explosion since there's been two touchdowns in a minute? I guess so. I mean, that's the only way we can put it in this type of situation. <laughs> If you're just joining us, it has been a slow first half for both teams as the defenses have taken over. But in the last minute, we've seen a touchdown by each team as we approach halftime. And the Tritons will look to go ahead here for the first time. Hunt throws over the top, and it's Grimsley again. Yeah. Oh, oh, love that. He got to stick him on his gloves. Oh, my goodness. Three plays in a row to Grimsley. And... <laughs> If that's the way we got to go the rest of the game, we got to do that. That's a replacements callback, and I love it. It's 16 to 14 now for the Tritons. As we approach halftime, 20 seconds left. We'll be right back on KDF. If you're still with us on YouTube, thank you for joining us today. I'm Iran Hammy alongside TJ Vela, and we are approaching halftime with. Some more excitement as the fans are now getting back into this one. They love that offense because that's just the American way. And we're seeing a lot more of it here in the final minute of the first half between the Tritons and River Kings. And there was a scoreboard error. I thought it was a two-point conversion and not a three. It is 15 to 14 Tritons. Everyone's still learning, Iran. Everyone's still making sure that things are right here. But you're right. It, it, the low-scoring affair really took the fans out of it for a little bit. I mean, a lot of the old-school type of fans love defensive contests, but in today's day and age, people love high-powered offense. They love scoring, and that's what you expect, especially in arena football. Welcome back in. If you're watching on KDF, thank you for joining us there and on YouTube today. The Tritons kicking off now after their second touchdown of the game. Here we go. River Kings return near their goal line. Can't get anywhere. Tritons now swarming, but he still breaks every tackle. Won't let him get to the 15, and now there's just 11 seconds left in the half for the River Kings to try and do something. Yeah, that's the unfortunate thing there. If you're going to be doing all the dancing back there, trying to make something happen, you've got to realize you're losing a lot more time. You're losing clock, and it's going to put your offense in a tough situation if you're expecting to score here on this drive. And TJ, I don't have a number eight on my roster. So Neither do I. I, I was, was looking through the website. <laughs> I was looking through everything they sent us, and I do not see a number eight. And it appears the penalties from the previous drive will be enforced now. So an even taller task for Cedar Rapids. They're backing up to Cedar Rapids right now. 1,300 miles worth of unsportsmanlike penalties. Woof. Again, if you missed our pregame coverage, I, I cannot imagine being on the bus that long. They, The Cedar Rapids River Kings drove here from Iowa. and I mean, plenty of time to watch a lot of movies. They could have binge watched a lot of series on Netflix. 11 seconds left. Reed comes back in at quarterback under center. Throws to a wide open man at the 20, but taken down. Clock should stop. But timeout River Kings as well. It looked like Johnson there who made the catch was way off sides, but it just wasn't called. 
But either way, first down for the River Kings, and Coach Clark calls timeout to stop the clock at six seconds. Yeah, you heard the fans clamoring for a flag there. I looked over at the official on the line, did not see him budge. But now all the Tritons need to do is hold the goal line. With six seconds, you got to think there's only time for one more play. If the River Kings are going to do anything, it'd have to be a short, quick pass and then call another timeout just to make it a little more manageable to get the ball into the end zone. For the Tritons defensively, it's very similar to those fourth down stops. Don't let anything get behind you. Guard the end zone and just make the tackle when you're called upon. Here we go. Reed and shotgun. Two receivers to his left. Low snap. It's on the ground. Triton's ball. Turn of events. A huge mistake there by the River Kings. They were trying to do a trick play, snapping it to the running back, and just the bad snap that we've seen all years from them so far cost them a huge spot here. Now it's going to be the Tritons' ball, and if you think Coach Chavez isn't going to take a shot at the end zone, <laughs> you crazy, man. <laughs> and a timeout by the Tritons. Oh, excuse me, I thought they were signaling tri timeout. The Tritons have three seconds, so just the last play of the first half and they can really extend the lead here something they've been struggling to do they just captured the lead for the first time 17 seconds ago and this is huge because we don't get the ball back to start the second half so if they're able to put the ball in the end zone here and score it could be great momentum heading into the second half Grimsley's here on the near side Hunt quick throw high too high too high for number four, Quentin Williams. So that'll be our halftime score. The Tritons head into the break, leading by 115 to 14 in the defensive battle that we've seen so far. Stick with us after the break on KDF. We have much more action planned for you. And on YouTube, we will step aside for some halftime shenanigans, of course.
the spring and spring became the summer who'd have believed you'd come along hand touching hand reaching out touching me touching you Touching warm, reaching out, touching me. While you're watching the Corpus Christi Tritons take on the Cedar Rapids River Kings, we are currently in halftime. Tritons leading 15 to 14. Hope you guys are enjoying that halftime show. The light show is spectacular with a great DJ. You definitely got to be here for the next game on Friday against the Far Phantoms. But we will return on KDF right after this break for some more action with the teams getting ready to warm up for the second half. All right, half. fans, we want you up and out of your seat. Let's see your best dance moves. 
Who's the best dancer in the building? I don't know if it counts if you're sitting in your seat, though. You gotta get up out of your seat and dance. He's got the right idea. There we go. There we go. It's a dance camp, folks. Can you do something for me? Can you hit a little rich flex for me? And 21, can you do something for me? Drop some bars to my face, face for me. And 21, can you do something for me? Can you talk to the ops next for me? 21, do your thing, 21, do your thing. Do your thing, 21, do your thing. All right, there's some dancing right there. That's how you get shot. See, don't stop dancing, keep dancing. It's the dance cam, folks. All right, see, that camo shirt's not working because I see you, sir. I see you. That's what I'm talking about. Real, say that a lot. You could tell how I talk and the way that I rock. I'm a straight shooter. No sugar coat, no booger sugar. Never had a nose full of. It's all good, folks. Coke, how you want to coke? Drink what you want to drink. Smoke what you want to smoke. Who you want to just as long as she down, if she not, then run along, boy. It's too many fish to be pressed about it. I'm stacking too many chips to care less about a fit. I'm missing dirty kicks watching YouTube. I'm cutting grass and designing like it's fupu. I got a real thick gal, wanna sit on my lap. No BBL, you can tell she just built like that. You ever walk into a spot knowing every the pops? Not a whole lot of that done felt like that. But there I go. There I go, there I go, there I go, uh, yeah, it's me with the inside out tee, low key, only short for a large fee, there I go, there I go, there I go, there I go, yeah, that's him, pay the arm in the there we go, cause they know the jump out the chill cone, some moves.
Let me tell you that. Hey, no one can compare with that you. That mustache, <laughs> that head of hair. Oh my gosh. Do you think the Venom's mascot looks like that? You think the Lion's mascot looks like that? Uh, no. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out what a River King is. So as soon as someone can let me know on the YouTube comments, um, I'd be glad, gladly uh, to be schooled today. To be frank, I don't even think they know what a River King is. <laughs> Well, coming from the Midwest, I always have to ask, I don't know what a Hoosier is either. Yeah, I don't think anyone knows what that is either. <laughs> All right. Oh, we are approaching the second half here. So we will take our last break over on KDF before we get the action going again with the Cedar Rapids River Kings receiving the second half kickoff. So we'll be right back after this break. All right, and thank you to everyone behind the scenes making this happen today. There's a lot of moving parts. I know you just hear me and TJ, but this does not happen without many, many other people. And thank you to all the photographers we have out there filming the game and, and operations. And, oh, shout out to my DJ, man. I love this guy. Honestly, I may have seen him at Flanagan's last night. <laughs> For being real. He may have been the guy there. Well, if you are paying attention on YouTube, uh, there are a couple streams, so we are monitoring those comments as well. And it seems the Columbus Lions are tuning in today to get a little scouting report on some upcoming games. The Tritons won't play the Lions until the end of the season, but it's never too early to start getting ready for a high-powered matchup. Both teams have taken the field, getting ready for second-half action. And as the song says, it is getting hot in here with the scoring lighting up at the end of the first half. Now you're completely right on that. Both teams fin finally finding their stride offensively. It had been a defensive battle the entire contest. Really impressively, though, has been that River King defense and that defensive line. Welcome back to those watching over on KDF. I'm Iran Hammy alongside TJ Vela, Corpus Christi Tritons getting ready for the second half against the River Kings and they lead by one although that wasn't the case for most of the first half it took a touchdown with 20 seconds remaining in the first half for the Tritons to take the lead for the very first time it's been a very defensive minded game for both teams TJ what have you seen and liked so far I've seen and liked the defensive side of things I mean that for me being coming from the offensive side of the ball I hate when defenses do well <laughs> but both teams defensively have done really well, and specifically those defensive lines for both the River Kings and the Tritons. The thing more, though, coming into the second half is I'm just shocked at how the offense for the Tritons has played so far. It hasn't looked like the offense we've seen all year, and I think it all starts with that pressure that the River Kings defensive line is putting on Jeremy Hunt in the pocket. But the great thing, what did we see at the end of the first half? We saw the offense start picking up, and so hopefully... Coach Chavez, Jeremy Hunt, everyone in the locker room knows what they need to do now to get things going and create a great second half. But it's all going to start with the defense and making a stop to get the ball back to the offense for the Tritons. The Tritons surely bring in the momentum because I'm feeling the energy right now. And it may be the three shots of espresso I had during the first half. But halftime was electric. The Tritons took the momentum in, scoring with 20 seconds left in the second quarter and then recovering a fumble with three seconds left, trying to get one last shot. Obviously, it didn't work out. But here we go for the second half. It's 15-14, Tritons. Let's get going. Long kick into the end zone. It's still got to be returned unless it goes out of play. And fortunate for the River Kings, it did go out of the end zone. Yeah, that one hop that put it right over the wall. <laughs> if it would have just gave a little backspin, some Scotty Scheffler with the 56-degree <laughs> wedge. Oh, man, it could have been a great way to start out this second half for the Corpus Christi Tritons. Great segue. We've got a lot of great sports going on. It is the month of April, which I think is second uh, in my book for, for great sports next to October. That's very true. There's a lot of sporting events happening today. And we've got the, the last day of the Masters tournament happening right now. And uh, as TJ mentioned, Scotty Scheffler was in the lead as I last checked. It is the last day of the NBA regular season. Uh, it's the last few days of the NHL regular season. 
And, of course, we just had March Madness wrap up with a historic run from UConn. So if you're a sports fan, you got to be loving all of this. I think the last time so many sports happened in one day was June 17th, 1994. I wonder what happened on that day. I, I, I don't know. I just <laughs> A lot of sports. Second half underway with Reed under quarterback for the River Kings. It's a quick throw to the left. He's got Donovan Johnson, who's out near the 20. That's just a great first play one, there Jordan for the River Kings Seven. offense, finding the soft spot in the zone coverage from the Tritons. Johnson making a great catch on the ball, just holding on to it, getting the first down for his team. One play, 10 yards, can't beat that offensively for the River Kings. Verlin Reed starting to gain some traction under his feet. Now it's been a dual quarterback system here for the River Kings, but I see their other quarterback, Kaylor Sullivan, on the sideline without his helmet or pads, so he may be done for the day. Yeah, he was taking a lot of hard hits there in that first half, and yeah, yeah you're right, he looks like he's done for the day. And there's going to be a jump on the offensive side of the ball. Back him up Ball's five yards. On Cedar Rapids. Yeah, the guard in the center were trying to communicate and figure out what they were going to do on the blitz from the, river, from the Tritons. And he just came out of his stamps, took a step, and that's going to be a penalty. Also great about this, TJ, is that I can hear everything the players are saying oh, down yeah. there. You can hear everything. It's a very intimate experience when you think about it with the fans being so close, with us being so close. We are really right on top of the action here at the American Bank Center. Second and 15 for the River Kings trying to gain their offensive footing once again. One receiver in motion. It's handed off, though. He's got room to run. There he goes. Breaking tackles left and right at the goal line, and he's in. Touchdown, River Kings. How about that for taking the momentum back? And just a great play call there from Coach Clark of the River Kings. I think that was number 18, Billy Massinger. Really just once he got through the line, you had the, the misdirection in the backfield. Once he got through the line, there was not much for him to do besides outrun everyone else. And once he did, it was pay dirt. And the River Kings get their lead back after only a minute 45 comes off the clock. Oh, an offensive lineman there for the River Kings did limp off on that play, but like you mentioned, great play. The motion moved everyone to the right side of the field. He had all the daylight in the world on the left side. Cakewalk. So the River Kings will go for two as they take the lead once again. Reed calls his own number, hit by four Tritons, five, six. You can't go anywhere. Conversion is no good. And that's something your right store, there that the Tritons pride Kings themselves 20. on, gang Tritons tackling. 15. Once you get your first guy there, hold him up, let everyone else come through, make a play on it. We saw it right there. Huge stop to not let that two-point conversion get through. And now only down five with 13 minutes, 15 seconds left. It's 20 to 15. Tritons ball after we take a quick break over on KDF. Again, thank you all for joining us. If you're watching on YouTube today across the country, wherever you may be. I know a lot of arena football fans out there, or if you're just in competition across the AAF scouting your next opponent, the Tritons and River Kings. River Kings still looking for their first win in regular season play. Have had a couple victories in exhibitions, and because of the way things have played out, a lot of teams will be playing exhibitions throughout the season. Here's the kickoff. This one's a little bit more lofted and caught around the eight-yard line for King. He's got room. Oh, and brought down at midfield. If he breaks that tackle, he's gone. Literally one tackle. All he had to do was break, but nope. Number seven, Donovan Johnson there with the shoestring tackle bringing King down. But it's going to be great field position to start for the Tritons. Welcome back in on KDF. The kickoff was returned to midfield for the Tritons, setting them up for a good position to attack once again, now trailing 20-5 to after a quick strike by the River Kings to start the second half. Hunt on the ball. Open man, that's Grimsley again. He's getting involved now a lot more, and you know, that was the key to success last week, and I think they finally figured it out. Yeah, right there again, we see the River Kings in zone coverage you cannot play that with a guy like Grimsley. They, you all saw it all in the first half. They were in man coverage, pressing him from the line of scrimmage to start. But now Grimsley really finding his open spaces. And once he finds that open space, 
That's where he becomes really dangerous, getting the yards after catch and being very elusive to tackle. Here we go now, second and short. Gonna opt to throw this one. Quick one to Plummer. Pass Welcome to the AIF, sir. It's a Triton's first That was a great down. job by Hunt. You saw the pump oh, fake. If he would have thrown it off the first, it was supposed to be a quick pass, but the pump fake there gave him enough time to avoid the hands of the defender coming over. Pump fake, throw it over the top. Let Plummer do the rest. Triton First down, Tritons. Leverage mechanical services. First and goal for the Tritons. Tritons. Again, that pass was caught by Lawrence Plummer, new to the team. He played tight end in college at Presentation College in NAIA school. Tritons cruising here. Pump fake by Hunt. He's got a scramble. Oh, he had an open man and just overthrew him. Hunt, a little off, off keel here tonight. Yeah, right there, Hunt was looking for Grimsley as his first option on the out route. He was covered nicely, so he didn't go to him. Tried to scramble a little bit and just missed Doss there. But you're right, Aron. We haven't really seen Jeremy Hunt miss as many wide-open receivers this season as he's done tonight. And right there, that would have been an easy six. That would have been the lead back for his team. I know he's punching himself internally trying to say, you know, I should have had that one. Another shot for the Triton second down. Timeout, Triton. It is going to be a tight timeout, excuse me, for the Tritons here. They want to talk this over. Chavez got to get a little creative as he was fairly shut down with his play calls in the first half. But again, it wasn't really on him at that point because his, no, no. his plays and how creative they are, it takes a little bit to develop. And has to be executed. And it just, Hunt just didn't have the time to let those plays develop. He was, it seemed like he had a defender in his lap as soon as he snapped the ball every single time in that first half. So it's going to be important here. Coach Chavez calling that timeout just to bring the guys together. He knows how important this drive is in putting the ball in the end zone, so he wants to make sure everything is right for this play. Well, if you're just catching the action here in the second half, we had first half touchdowns for the Tritons by number eight, Doss on your near side, and Grimsley, who's about to go in motion. Those are his two favorite targets today. Hunt has to step up in the pocket. Throws across the middle. And the referee's going to call him down at the one. He was As literally hit at the goal the line. Plumber. Like he hit a brick wall. Personal foul. Yeah, that was Master a great catch Cedar by Rapids. Plummer. It looked like maybe he got in there. You see the flag come in late. It's going to be roughing the passer. So we'll see what Coach Chavez wants to do. He'll probably accept that just so we can put the ball closer and get a first set of downs. But yeah, great job by Plummer there, securing that even with the big hit. Great awareness by Hunt as he approached the line of scrimmage to release that very dangerous throwing over the middle across his body. Will we see a tush push here, Iran? You love to see it, and there it is. Touchdown, Triton! Touchdown, Triton! Well, Number three, for a slow Jeremy. first half, we've seen two touchdowns Hunt. here on the first two drives of the second half. Yeah, I think the main point of the, both of the conversations in both locker that rooms is offense. We need to get things going Saratoga. and get things going quick. Both teams scoring on their first drive. Here for the Tritons off the tush push. We saw them do it on a fourth and one earlier. We knew that Coach Chavez loves running it up the middle with his big body quarterback. Now that touchdown gives the Tritons a one point lead. And hopefully here with this two point conversion, we can put it into three. Going for two here as TJ mentioned. All receivers to Hunt's left with one running back in the backfield. He drops back over the top. Caught by Doss at the very top of the route. And again, a great job by Doss there. The late crossing route over the middle, snuck behind the defense and the linebacker core for the River Kings and makes a great play on the ball, high pointing it up at the top, bringing it down in play. Two point conversion is good, 23 to 20. The Tritons are up with 10 minutes left in the third. Triton's finding their groove now in the third quarter. Fans are loving it. I'm seeing some 
kids up out of their seats loving it. Maybe they're just loving the DJ. I think it's a combination of both. You love the vibes the DJs are curating. You love what you're seeing out in the field. So it's hard not to dance. Hey, Corpus Christi loves dancing, Iran. I know you came from hey, here, yeah. but Corpus Christi loves going. I, I've seen the dance scene a little bit around here. I may, I may be busting a move up here in the booth. I hope you are. <laughs> you and Richard. <laughs> uh, it's a great environment here at the American Bank Center. As I love to mention, what other stadium is on the water? In the AIF, you walk right out the doors of the American Bank Center. You've got the beach. And it's an onside kick. Didn't quite go far enough. I don't believe so. And we saw that last week against Amarillo. Coach Chavez loves the element of surprises. He started off that game with an onside kick that we were able to recover. But right there, Lund not able to get that across the 10 yard mark and now it'll be great field position for the river kings as the fan in front of me just spilled their popcorn i'm a little surprised as well man that's a 10 dollar popcorn right there i don't know why you're spilling that so coach chavez's high risk high reward moment is spoiled the river kings get the ball on the eight yard line of the Tritons down three nine minutes to go in the third quarter very eerie start here I mean it seems like this is where the River Kings were on their first drive in the first half and here we go two receivers in motion for Reed under center he's going to pitch it though there's that running back bouncing around gets to about the five six yard line we have an official timeout And there's actually two 18s on the roster for the River Kings around. That's probably number 18, Devontae Brown. There's also, like we said earlier, Billy Mas Masanger. So we'll go with Devontae Brown for now. I don't think you can be wrong, though. Until they start giving us the official ones every we single time. We did not receive a roster ahead of the game today. We're just going to do the best we can with what we got. Going to be second down and goal for the River Kings. Trailing by three in the third quarter. Two receivers are going to go in motion on each side of Reed as he goes under center. Handles the snap, throws. Broken up in the back of the end zone. There's a lot of contact, but the flag will stay put away. Got a lot of pushing and shoving in the back of the end zone there, but the ref's going to let him play. Great job, great defense. Just not allowing any room, any space for the River Kings receiver to make a play on the ball. And now another third down play for the, tri for the River Kings. So while the River Kings have had their success in the secondary this game, there's been a lot of success for the Tritons as well back there, especially without their number one guy, Deron Maxwell, who was suspended for punching a player in the last game. Reed hands off. Jukes and it's loose in the end zone. See what the call is? No signal yet. And it looks like it's going to be Tritons football the way everyone's pointing at this big screen. But here in this league, there is no type of any, there, there is no replay review. So it's going to look, it's looking like Tritons ball. They, they have not made a signal at all. But they're moving the ball like it's the Tritons ball. The way the sticks are moving, it looks like it's going to be Tritons ball. And so right there, you saw Devontae Brown, the running back, reach out for the end zone. That's what they don't want you to do in that type of situation. Don't reach out, especially with one hand, because you're going to lose the ball more often than not. And there, 
Brown fumbles into the end zone. The Tritons get the ball touchback. And now, opportunity here to increase our lead. And he's a big boy. He didn't have to reach. I think he was close enough to the end zone that he might have been able to fall in. But nonetheless, the Tritons coming up with a big defensive play. Hunt's going to throw now to his left. And whoa, there he goes. Did you get an autograph over there, fans? As Langford goes over the boards into a, the lap of a couple children. I think Langford got a taste of some nachos there, the way he went all the way into the crowd. Great job by him, though, holding on to the ball and securing it to get, make it now a second and short. The Tritons have done very well on first down when no penalties are committed. That's the big DJ. thing right there. <laughs> Two receivers to the right. Pump fakes and goes long to the end zone. It's Langford. Broken up. Good throw from Hunt there. Just great coverage by the River Kings deep. You thought maybe Langford was going to be able to pull it in, but not. that was not the case. But because of that great first down play, it sets him up with the third and short here. I'm assuming we're going to get a quick run play here just to get the first down and reset the sticks. Well, we do see Josiah King in there, the local product of Corpus Christi, right behind Hunt. And there's another little tush push for the first down. First down, moving the stick for the Tritons over their own 20 yard line as the clock ticks under six minutes left in the third quarter. But that's why that first down play is so important because it sets you up to have a deep pass just like we saw earlier. If you don't get it, you can just run the, the quick run there, get the first down, and now you have a fresh set of downs to work with. Seeing a lot of excitement in this second half and can't help but notice all the options you have here at the American Bank Center, TJ. I mean, we've got fans in the stands right beside us. We've got people sitting in the end zone. We've got suites available. Don't be giving them too many options. They're going to have people up here with us sooner or later. Uh, we, we, we've got our guy Richie Perez here. <laughs> That's all we need. <laughs> all right, we're going to take a quick break over on KDF. Stick with us on YouTube. Uh, we've got the... Good old-fashioned kiss cam going around the stadium here at the American Bank Center. Uh, okay, people are now playing along. We had some trouble with the dance cam at halftime. But the energy has picked up, wouldn't you say, TJ? It's a very lovey-dovey environment now, Ron. Because <laughs> people love what they're seeing on the field from the Tritons. I mean, you were complimenting the Tritons mascot quite a bit earlier. Hey, that's, that's a sexy mascot right there. <laughs> He is amazing. Oh, we're back in play with Hunt on the ball. He's got a scramble. Gets wrapped up behind the line. Thought he was going to get away for just a moment, but he kept his eyes downfield, and two linemen were able to get around his legs. Yeah, right there, Malik Allen again was the one person that didn't allow Hunt to get away free. Had Hunt been able to escape Allen's arms, he would have had so much room to work with, so much space to run. He would have easily gotten the first and maybe even more. It's going to be second down for the Tritons. River Kings have to be pleased with how they've played so far compared to last week giving up a 20-7 lead to the Harrisburg Stampede. A little pitch to King. Do a little dance. Gets a few yards back. Not much. Boy, the run game is really tough in this, in this environment, TJ. Yeah, especially when you're running close to the boundary right there. King really had nowhere to work. And that was really due to the linebacker number 26, Austin Wood, scraping over the top of, a, of his defensive line and meeting King in the backfield. Welcome back on KDF. The Tritons were able to run one play with Josiah King to get a few yards back. It'll be third down as they talk it over. 
And as we were just talking about the River River Kings, which I'm still I haven't been monitoring the comments, so I'm not sure yeah, but if anyone's responded no one, to me yet. Apparently no one knows because no one has said anything. Well, River Kings defense is playing exceptionally well today. It's a 23-20 to 20 game in favor of the Tritons, and they just held the River Kings at the goal line. But outside of those couple of turnovers, they played a lot better than their last game. Hunt's got it. The blitz is coming. He throws across the middle to Doss. Look at that celebration. I love when they show their emotions. That's the best part of playing professional sports is being able to show your emotions like that. And why wouldn't you? A great catch by Doss there. A slant right over the middle. Defense played it well, but Doss played it better. Bringing that down. A huge first down for the Tritons as they inch closer to the end zone. And I should say appropriate emotions. We haven't talked about it a lot, but emotions got out of control against the Amarillo Venom, which led to a suspension and ejection that game. Much better today. Hunt looking for Grimsley. Batted away. And Hunt, fortunate there that that one was not picked off just off the hands of the River King defender. You'd like to see Grimsley there try and turn into a defender and get that ball away from the defense. But luckily for the Tritons, they're going to have another shot here to the end zone. Second down. Grimsley has gotten more involved late in the second quarter into the third quarter. He was nowhere to be found. Maybe he was getting his dance lessons on because that's how he was able to score the Tritons' second touchdown. Hunt pressured, releases, and just, I think I cursed Grimsley, hits him in the chest and falls to the ground. Yeah, a, pass a passenger that was just a little bit behind him, tried to just let that one fall into his hands, off the chest, and Grimsley says that's, that one's on him, and it is. It's now third down for the Tritons. The... River Kings have done well to mix up their pressure. Many times we see just the three linemen rush, and they've mixed in that line ba linebacker blitz every now and then. Only one linebacker is allowed to blitz during the play until the player with the ball has left the pocket. Hunt, he has a receiver out left, and he'll use the check down to King. Leaps a man! How you like me now? King's got the spring, and he hopped right over that man all the way to another first down for the Tritons. You had the defense in a zone look, and no one had the running back accounted for. Hunt going automatically to his check down. King, and let that man do the rest of the work. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. That's a bad, bad man. Fans were out of their seats after that one. And King will stay in there in the backfield. Now first and goal for the Tritons once again. Hunt tried to call his own number, but O-line couldn't get him any room. And that's just a situation there where the River Kings were ready for it defensively because that's the play that we scored on earlier. Just a QB run to the boundary on the top side. That time, though, the River Kings defense line ready for it, slanted to it perfectly and swallowed up Hunt in the backfield. What kind of trickery do you expect here? It's got to involve Grimsley in some way. <laughs> How about a good old-fashioned uh, catch and pitch? Offensive lineman touchdown? Yeah. Oh, you're right. We haven't seen that yet. He's got time. There's a man in the end zone. Tritons conquering the sea and land today. That's another touchdown. And that's another DOS touchdown there. And another situation where he gets behind the defense, behind the secondary, and just settles in there in the middle of the end zone. Great job by him finding that soft spot in the defense. And the Tritons now up nine, trying to go up ten off the kick of Lundy. 
Well, this is the Triton team we saw two weeks ago against Amarillo here at the American Bank Center. Offense couldn't be slowed down very often by the Venom. And I think, I think, the Tritons are figuring it out. They'll go for the extra point here with Lundy. Lundy is money. And puts the Tritons up 10, 30 to 20. And, and it's like on, we're on the playground, just swinging away. But going back to it, how big is that fumble by Brown now? Huge. It Huge. turned into seven points for the Tritons and no points for the River Kings. It's a 10-point lead for the Tritons now with 44 seconds left in the third. That's some comfortability now. If the River Kings do score, the Tritons may still lead. And I haven't egged you on yet. Where's the Uno? We're still looking for an Uno here at the American Bank Center. See, I thought by not talking about it, it could happen. <laughs> Hasn't happened yet. I, reverse, I'm, reverse psychology on the ball. Like we're trying to do so much different here. Let's figure maybe we just wouldn't mention it. Well, it's my job to talk about everything. Oh, easily, yeah. <laughs> we know Lundy has the power in his leg. We've seen it in warm-ups. And as he gets more loose, I mean, it becomes more uh, or a better chance. The river... Kings are on their own five. Here comes Lundy. That's into the end zone. And goes out of play once more. Man, that's just a lucky bounce for the River Kings. They are getting very lucky letting that thing bounce. Yeah, they're, they're, they're playing with fire over there. One more inch to the left or right or even forward or backward. That could hit the wall, bounce back in. And with the Tritons going down full speed, they could easily fall on top of that ball. The ball must be returned in the AIF on a kickoff if it's in play. And so by it bouncing over the end zone walls, the River Kings are fortunate and they'll take the ball at the their own 10 yard line for first and 10 down, down 10 with under a minute left in the third quarter. This game is ticking away fast. So they're gonna need to make a move here. Verlin Reed still in at quarterback. Quick throw over the middle. Flanagan. Out near the first down marker. Just a great job by Flanagan there. He's in motion. They're expecting him to go deep, but right there, a hitch route. Finds the soft spot in the Triton defense. Settles in there for a good catch. Flanagan listed with experience from South Dakota University. A big... Uh, Big time program. Hey, even the players are getting into the DJ's music now, DJ. I see a couple guys. It's all about the home field advantage, whether with the fans, the broadcast, or the players. My DJ games, curates everything. We've got a dead ball here. Looks like to be the fourth quarter. Look at that. Time has just ticked away. And with just 15 minutes left to play, put your fours up. 10 point lead for the Tritons, 30 to 20. We'll be right back on KDF, KDF after this break for the fourth quarter. The fours are up, TJ. Reminds me of Mac Brown and those early 2000s Texas teams. That's where it really got popular. Put your fours up, put your horns up and go win a national championship. Well, it's an exciting time for football fans because we obviously have arena football all summer long. We have summer college ball, or excuse me, spring college ball taking place right now. So if you're a fan of a college program, that's something to get excited about. I know my program uh, was being shown off this weekend to see what we might be in store for this fall. I don't know why they're showing your program. <laughs> Terrible program. <laughs> of course, TJ would never say anything bad about the Ohio State University. Never. As a UT fan, I would love to see you guys in the national championship. <laughs> One day. <laughs> One day. <laughs> hey, welcome back on KDF. It is the fourth quarter. 15 minutes left to play. Reed. 
River Kings over the middle. It's Donovan Johnson picking it up. Big, big time play. Fun fact, Donovan Johnson and I grew up in the same hometown. So he's out there in Ohio as well? Yeah, he went to Brush High School. and we, I grew up in South Euclid, Ohio. Wow. Small, small world. Look at y'all doing big things. Well, you want to hear of a smaller world, Ver, Verlin Reed, the quarterback? We were at the Ohio State University at the same time. Wow. Verlin Reed came in, well, was a quarterback in high school and converted to wide receiver. We'll get back to that after this play. Reed scrambles. He's going to trip him over his own lineman before the line of scrimmage. Yeah, the Tritons got lucky there because Reed had a great clear path but just tripped on the foot of his offensive lineman to go down. It's unfortunate for them because, they, like I said, they had the path to get to the first down marker. Going to be second down for the River Kings at the 21-yard line of the Tritons. And back to Reed, he was a quarterback in college, or excuse me, in high school, and converted to wide receiver when he came to Ohio State. And he happened to be there during that tumultuous year when Jim Trestle left the program and they were in between coaches. So, succeeded a little bit at wide receiver, but when Urban Meyer came in, it was a different story. Reed hands it off. Big run. Big run. Touchdown, River Kings. Boy, they know how to run the ball in this league. Yeah, it's not something you typically see here in the American Indoor Football League. It's just running the ball at will like that. Right now, the Tritons defense not able to stop the run. There's some big holes in that defensive line who we talked about. Had some spots missing earlier after roster uh, cuts were made. But right there, just the speed of the running back gets in the end zone. Well, cuts give it the Triton lead. To Coach Darren Clark, with his scheme, he's been moving linebackers and DBs out of position all afternoon long, causing chaos that opens up that run game. It's all about the misdirection. Everyone on the defensive side of the ball has an assignment, whether you're a defensive lineman trying not to let the offensive lineman get to the linebackers, linebackers watching the linemen, or anything like that. That's a delay of game here on the River Kings will push them back. Well, that's just inexcusable there. you trying to get yourself back into this game and make the two-point conversion harder now. Down four. It's kind of important. they got to get this point here. I see Nick Smith up near the defensive line for the Tritons. He knows how to cause havoc in the backfield. He will be the one blitzing. Two receivers in motion. Reed to the left. Intercepted. Can be returned. Fabian McNichols. Says not in my house, sir. We've been waiting for it all day. McNichols has been in the great spot defensively, knocking balls down. But there, finally, makes the jump on the route, catches the ball, and gets a good, great return. But more importantly, stops the River Kings in their tracks and doesn't allow them to get the extra points. And we've been talking about those crucial plays. Like the fumble in the end zone by the River Kings. And then... The two failed two-point conversion there after a delay of game call. Will that come back to haunt them with 13 minutes left to play in the game, down four? And the Tritons have figured it out on offense this half. TJ, I don't even have a number for the kicker. Neither do I. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but neither Either do way, I. <laughs> the kick is off and caught around the five. Doss get plowed into the wall around the 17-18 yard line. Things are getting a little chippy down there now. Who's going to blink first? The players realize it's a close game. High intensity environment there on the field. And they know what's at stake here as we get closer and closer in all these contests. We start talking about playoff implications, start talking about seeding and everything. Like these are the, some of these important games where the, how, however it plays out, this is going to shape it. And the Tritons would like to keep up with the Columbus Lions who seem unstoppable at this point. 
flags down, throws good to Doss on the right side. We'll see what the call is. The Columbus Lions have only played the Amarillo Venom so far, but they, both them and the Tritons are atop the leaderboard right now. Speaking of leaderboard, we do have the Masters still going. <laughs> And it's going to be against the River Kings there. So we'll likely see Coach Chavez accept that just because it'll still be first down. And so they'll get far, five out of that one. And again, it's one of those alignment penalties against the River Kings. And right now they're just struggling to, to prevent those from happening, giving free yards. And it, it could be a number of things. All the linemen have to be facing the offensive line. Can't come on diagonally at all. Linebackers have to stay in the box. Only one linebacker can blitz. Here's Hunt with pressure. Goes long. He's got Grimsley. Caught! Touchdown! As he flips over the boards. You can't stop him. What a throw, what a catch. Oh my goodness. We talked about it all night long, the potential for the big play. Penalty flag comes in likely for taunting, but that's not gonna take away from Grimsley and what just happened. Catching it at the top of the throw and holding on to it while being pushed over the wall. And I think the refs are just talking just to see if Grimsley did hold on to it for the full. I mean, we've got a camera right down there, so. He's saying hey, well, we got it. He's saying he got it right there. We've got a, one of our camera operators right where Grimsley went over the boards and caught it. And I'm not going to say the camera operator is biased in any way. Of but, course not. But he's not being paid by. <laughs> but I, I'm. You might as well just post curse of the commentator right on my forehead because everything I've said has jinxed this game. As I said, emotions haven't gotten out of hand and here we are with a personal foul coming. I'll take it though if it's going to let the touchdown stand. There it is. Well, it's going to be on the River Kings and, and it's injection. Oh man. That's huge. That must have been his second one of the game. We haven't gotten any numbers on who it could be. But the, and, and the referees do not have a microphone, I don't believe. <laughs> Even our PA announcer is unfamiliar, but that's going to cause an eruption in the arena as Cedar Rapids lose one of their defensive players. Yeah, the Corpus Christi faithful love the sound of that. They're waving goodbye to the Cedar Rapids player as our PA announcer so elegantly put it. Well, TJ, we are two for two on games with ejections. Maybe we're the issue. As Taylor Swift likes to tell me, I'm the problem. It's me. So I've had many exes tell me I was the issue. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Not going to say that they're right. <laughs> Well, the referees are still trying to figure this one out, but the Tritons have extended their lead back to 10 right now as they are waiting to attempt the two-point conversion. Hunt still on the field. No no sign of Lundy to kick this one. He is on he's on the field, but up against the boards. Yeah, in this situation, you have a 10-point lead. You might as well go for the two-point conversion just to make this one a little bit more out of reach. I think the conversation more so stems from where Coach Chavez wants to use the unsportsmanlike penalty, if he wants to do it here on the ensuing kickoff. Twelve and a half minutes left to play. The Tritons feeling very secure on offense right now as Hunt unleashes a dime to Grimsley. You're going to want an NFT of that. Well, here we go. We've got to figure it out. Hunt under center. Quick throw to the back corner. Nearly intercepted, but hits the ground. And it looks like we might have another formation penalty against the River Kings. Well, 
waiting for the officials' call here. They do have lengthy discussions. I think they're still trying to figure out the rules themselves. I think they just want to be sure they get it right, especially knowing how intense this game has been, how much both teams are in it to win it. They want to be sure that they're playing their A game too. And make sure we're here for all three hours of the game. Yeah, we got to get our money's worth. <laughs> and the flag's going to be picked up. It's going to be no good. And the Tritons are very confused. And the head referee is telling everyone, get out of here. Go to the special teams unit on the field. Every Triton just made the, the great old emoji with the arms out. I'm well like, aware what? of that one. <laughs> just the, what are we doing? <laughs> Meanwhile, we're going to go to a break over on KDF as things get sorted out here. You're watching the Corpus Christi Tritons versus the Cedar Rapids River Kings. We'll be right back. For those of us still watching on YouTube, hope you're enjoying the contest here. It's been a fun, fun second half. The defense, the defensive battle we saw in the first half has kind of evaporated a little bit as the Tritons have scored on, I believe, every second half drive. Yeah, they have, and it's been one of those things that and all it took was some adjust, adjustments at halftime to get the Tritons refocused, to get their offense ready to go. And for the defensive side of things, it was just a matter of keeping the momentum going. And this is going to be a big drive coming up. Big task to stop the River Kings offense. Still got a good crowd out here for 12 and a half minutes left of action. Again, a running clock until we hit that one-minute warning. Welcome back on KDF as the kickoff comes from Lundy to the River Kings. This one's a little bit shorter, caught inside the five. Taken out by the River Kings. No one's touched him. It's all Lundy. And he just got truck-sticked, and he is down. That's a touchdown-saving tackle. Talk about sacrificing your body for your team. Lundy doing so right there. Making the play on the ball, but he is down and he is hurt pretty badly, it looks like. Uh, the River Kings just straight downhill run. Full force. Bravery at its finest, but he'll need some time to recover there. Tremont Bright just barreling his way through. He found the seam and took it. Again, Lundy sacrificing himself. It looked like maybe his shoulder or something to the other. Well, we can take a look back at what the Tritons have done this game in the first half. Touchdowns by Dawson Grimsley from Hunt. And then again, each catch another touchdown in the second half, as well as Hunt taking one in himself. What do you think it is, TJ, that the Tritons have figured out against this River Kings defense that had stifled them in the first half? I think the biggest thing is that now Hunt has the time to do all of that. He's had a lot more opportunities to let plays develop. His offensive line has done a better job here in the second half of just not allowing the defensive line to penetrate too much into the backfield. And it's allowed all of this to happen, all of what we're talking about. Hunt, Hunt playing better, Grimsley to make better, all these great catches. And that's been the main thing, just giving our athletes time to do what they do best. Well, now's a good opportunity as Lundy is going to be helped up to his feet. And a round of applause. He's That's not a man that attends Weenie, Weenie Hut Jr. Now nah, he's tougher than a $2 steak. And he's still hot. He's getting the crowd into it. Oh, he's getting me into it. Oh, my gosh. That's good because I don't know who would be kicking if he was out of the game. That was the big thing I was going to mention. If he's out, <laughs> we could be in trouble. On April 19th, so this coming Friday, the Tritons are back in action. It won't be a league game. It'll be against another Texas team, Far Phantoms. And for the Iowa fans, that's P-H-A-R-R. -R. I had to learn that too coming from the Midwest. Don't worry, guys. 
Not F A R. Well, it's okay. Like in Western Ohio, a lot of town names you know, are pronounced you different know. than they are spelled. We have locations all over South Texas. In fact. And remember, here at Mr. Nice Guys, if you know, you know. Appreciate all the ads that we've had here today and all the supporters of the Corpus Christi Tritons. As the River Kings are set up in good position now after the return by Bright. Reed's in the shotgun. Two receivers to his right in motion. Hand it off. Quickly swallowed up. This time, it's Jason Simon. Haven't called his name too much today. And Coach Clark sticking with, what, with what's working. It's the run game so far. Going to Bright there, bringing in Brown now. Into the backfield. He's going with the bigger option at running back to try and put this one into the end zone. The two second half touchdowns have come on long runs by the River Kings. Down 10 here on the Tritons 5. Second down. Kept by Reed and he will waltz right in. Everyone's dancing today. Reed puts 6 on the board for the River Kings and they're still within striking distance. And that's the thing. When you have a running game that is so dangerous, especially in the goal line, you have Bright with the speed, you have Brown with the power. It allows your quarterback to do all of his reads and pull the ball if necessary. And you're right, Reed walked into the end zone there. Huge touchdown for the River Kings to cut this Triton lead down to four. I'm loving this remix by our house DJ as well. I have to keep giving him a shout-out. Sorry if you guys hate me for it. But excellent environment here at the American Bank Center. River King's first trip here. Reed for the two-point conversion, but we've got flags down. Yeah, another instance where the false start's going to push the River Kings back. And this is the second time in a row they've had a penalty on an extra point try that's going to move them back around. Again, an issue on these two-point conversion plays for them. The River Kings uh, had been an established program for about eight or so years until the pandemic struck and most of the world shut down, especially with sports. And they have started back up here to join the AIF this year as one of the inaugural teams. But the people of Cedar Rapids are happy to have another pro team back in their backyard. Reed's got to drop back and throw, and it's intercepted again in the end zone. I'll take that, says Jordan Seminat. Just another example of a great defensive work, especially in the secondary, not allowing anywhere for these receivers to go. And another interception on another two-point try. Yeah, the pressure really got to Reed there as he was falling back about five or ten yards before throwing and threw off his back foot. And they've brought the gun show in here. Wow. Show off, youngsters. The flex cam. Without that two-point conversion, it's still a four-point game for the Tritons, leading 36-32, to 32, and... The scoring's coming in bunches now because we've barely ticked off any time from the Tritons' last touchdown. And it all starts with the returns, honestly. Two great returns for both teams and put them in great field position offensively. And we'll see here how the Tritons can respond. Uh, Tritons are playing like this is going to be a shorter kick. And it is caught around the 20 of the River Kings. 
I think that was by design. It was by design. You had Langford there ready to catch that one. But a very, I think, questionable call, especially so early into this. Unless you're just expecting the Tritons to put it in quickly and then let your offense go back to work. I think the idea was there. The ball was spinning very much that if it lands, it could go any direction. But you really never know what could happen with a pooch kick like that, especially so high up in the air. Absolutely. But now great field position here for the Tritons. Set up at the 15-yard line of the River Kings. All three receivers to the right for Hunt. Steps up in the pocket, and he's hit. Boy, he didn't feel that one coming. It just came out of nowhere for him. Now coming up on the blind side there was big number 99, Ricky Neal Jr. And just nowhere for Hunt to go with that one. He thought he was going to be able to step up in the pocket, but not able to do so there as the pressure got to him. At 300 pounds, I would not want to be hit by any one of his stature. Second and long for the Tritons. Grimsley and Doss hunts two favorite receiver options in this game. He's got to step up in the pocket again, facing all the pressure. Tuck tight, did throw. Intercepted. But we do have a flag down. And we'll see what they call, but that's just another example of pressure creating interceptions and turnovers. Great job by the D-line of the River Kings. And that's gonna come back. And so as well as they did, they're the reason that interception will not stand and the ball will go back to the Tritons. Just another huge mistake for them. The second time that has cost them an interception and a turnover. It's like tripping on the graduation stage. You're embarrassed, but you still get to keep going. You know, I did that in high school. <laughs> Well, one fan is very adamant about the Tritons throwing the ball here as Hunt's about to do. Pump fakes, scrambles right. Again, throws it away smartly this time. But look at Doss. He has some separation going the other way in the end zone, and he is visibly frustrated. The play was just not going to him at that point. He needs to go across the field to get into the eyesight of Hunt because the way the pressure was getting to him, Hunt was not going to see him. Some raffle winner is about to be very happy. And if you haven't visited the American Bank Center, there's plenty to enjoy here. One of the nicest arenas in the arena football scene. I'd say the nicest. I would go out on the limb and say it's the That's nicest fair. arena in the arena football. That's fair. We're going to take an official timeout. And I don't know if you knew, TJ, last night they had to convert this whole thing from a boxing event that we had that was streamed on ESPN. Uh, a lot of big time local boxers having their professional debut. Sitcom is very good at, at providing the right people uh, for, for the right projects. Their, their turnaround teams very, very well and very prepared and organized. And, and execute very, very well. Basically, they're a one-stop shop to be able to do everything, um, special NDT, baseline inspections. I trust them. They, they always provide what they tell me they're going to provide. All right, thank you for your sponsorships for the Corpus Christi Tritons. Lucky to have a pro football team here in the sparkling city by the sea. Third down, flag goes, throws off. Caught in the end zone. We'll wait to see what that flag is. But right now, Doss proposing to the camera. Great pitch and catch there to Doss, but it li most likely is coming back here, maybe in offsides. All right, the touchdown's gonna stand. That's Doss's third score of the game, and the Tritons extend the lead again. And for Doss, who wasn't really a factor in any of the games before this, has really made himself known 
against the Cedar Rapids River Kings, and he's doing his dance on the field, and for good reason. Puts his team back up 10, now with an opportunity to extend the lead by two. Yeah, great pass by Hunt here, and just a nice touch, and look at that. Doss giving the old marriage proposal to his cameraman. <laughs> It is 42 to 32 with 8.50 left in the game. Bust the dance move, boys, because you are leading this game. As they're gonna go for two. Lined up here to the left. And usually when we see this, we might see Hunt take it himself. Now he'll drop back and throw, it's high, and caught! That's Grimsley sharing the wealth between Dawson and Grimsley all afternoon long. It's 44 to 32, Tritons. And that's why it's so important with the ball position there. Coach Chavez wanting to put it on the near hash, opens up the right side of the field and allows more receivers more time to sneak behind the defense. We saw it there. Grimsley, great catch, high pointing that ball coming down with it. 12 point lead now with 8.50 left in the fourth. Yeah, this is appearing to be just like the River Kings' first game against Harrisburg. They jumped out to a lead, but could not hang on because of turnovers. Another reason to come out to the games is you get the chance to meet these players right afterwards. And that's the great thing about the Tritons in the organization. We've talked about this before. The interaction with the fans, not just here at the American Bank Center, but in the community. They do so many volunteering events. They do so many just events where people and especially kids and children can meet these players, see what it's like to be a professional athlete, and really start to dream big, especially if you're in Corpus. And when starting these smaller leagues, it is so hard to keep it going, but the Tritons have done well to establish themselves and show that there will be continuity with this program. So far early in the season, they've done well on and off the field. Lundy back out there for taking the big hit. He's gonna kick it short. It's gonna hit the ground and bound. Someone's gotta get it. The Titans pick it up! Your voodoo. Your voodoo <laughs> happened again, Aron. You said it earlier when they kicked it to us. You never know what can happen on the pooch kick there. Lundy with his own pooch kick, sticks it like Scheffler, rolls it back like Tiger, and then we scoop it up like Arnold Palmer, and it's going to be our ball heading into our side of the field. What a play by the Tritons. Couple bounces, no communication in between four different River Kings. I think that's King who came flying in there to recover it. But you've said it before, there just seems to be no urgency and no communication on the kickoff return of the River Kings, and it hurts them there. Hunt being pressured, rolls right, throws. Grimsley snags it. There's some good sportsmanship as well. Grimsley having himself a second half after being almost non-existent in the first half. What a throw by Hunt there on the run. Throws a dime, a bullet to Grimsley, who makes a great diving catch on that. And now with four yards to go, you'll have four opportunities if you're the Tritons offense. The River Kings have not stopped the Tritons this half. Just took a while to get in the groove today. But you know, that's why you play four quarters. And we're going to have a timeout. Chavez didn't like what he saw. Yeah, Coach Chavez wanted to call timeout there just to this bring his guys back. Rush hour for her There's a little huddle here team. by a couple of the River here Kings on the near side. On Pazuki Tuesday. And here she is sharing OMG I'm engaged with her favorite friends over her favorite dishes. Yum. Congrats, Lauren. And here she is, years later, remembering extraordinary times while creating new ones. Escape to Extraordinary, only at BJ's Restaurant and Brew House. Okay, so the Tritons in good field position after recovering. 
the kickoff and a good catch by Grimsley inside the five. Langford and Dawson motion. Hunt has room to run, throws. Oh, and oh, almost intercepted. It looks like the DB almost threw it up with his hand for his teammate to catch it. But Hunt had all that room to the right. You're right. I thought he was going to take off and run right there. He had an open lane. All he needed was the four yards, and we've seen him do that time and again. Luckily for the Tritons, that ball did not bounce off the hand of the River Kings defender. It looked like maybe that was like a volleyball situation where they call it a pancake, and the hand just gets underneath before the ball hits the floor. Luckily, it didn't happen because that would have been a huge turnover in the end zone for the River Kings. Yeah, that's illegal in volleyball. The pancake? <laughs> the, uh, well, if you're using the, the palm of your hand. Well, you got to put the hand down like this. Oh, you can do that. Got to yeah. have the top hand. Top hand, yeah, sure. <laughs> Here we go again. Hunt. Touchdown, Tritons. Have yourself a day. Orlando Doss. And the River Kings are just squabbling between themselves. They can't figure out how to stop them. No, they can't, and it's tough because you have Hunt now who is so comfortable in the pocket. He knows that the defense is going to get to him, but he's just going to stay in there, take the hit, deliver a dime to where only his receiver can get it. These DBs for the River Kings are really struggling here, especially in the fourth quarter. I don't know if it's fatigue. I don't know what it is, but they are struggling to cover Grimsley and especially Orlando De Doss. They're going to go for two here. Keep it going. He's got plenty of time in the backfield. Now he's going to roll right. He still has nobody, but find somebody. How in the world, TJ? Your guess is better, is as good as mine. That's William Lankford just making a catch, doing what he does best, separating himself from the defender, and a huge two-point conversion there for your Tritons makes it a 20-point lead. And we're gonna keep it right here as the Tritons have extended that lead now, 52 to 32. Boy, did they blow the doors open on the American Bank Center. And it was really what this crowd needed. Everyone was quiet. Everyone really didn't know. An expanded arcade with games and prizes for everyone. The best birthday parties, go-karts and axe throwing, virtual reality and mini bowling, plus two all-new mega attractions. The lightning drop will thrill you to the core. And the Storm Chaser roller coaster has 360 degrees of fun. There's never been anything like this in Corpus Christi. Join the fun. Visit InTheGameFunTrackers.com to learn more. All right, under seven minutes left in the game. Tritons figuring it out in all aspects of this one. Here's Lundy gonna go long. That's gonna stay in. Has to be corralled in the end zone. Hit around the 10, falls around the 12. And right there, Bright just trying to do what he could with it. Got the ball off the ricochet from the wall. And that's what Lundy was going for, as we mentioned earlier. Just takes one little bounce. And he has a lot more confidence, too, after that pooch kick that was recovered. And the 50-50 raffle winner not collecting their prize yet. Hey, I'm about to show up with a ticket that says that number. <laughs> got to take advantage of that. That's tax-free, too. I'm not telling the IRS. That might be a couple trips to HEB. It's a lot of trips to Stripes, I'll tell you that. <laughs> or in any number of our sponsors down there, BJ's, Taco Palenque, Retro, the new bar downtown in Corpus Christi. Reed drops back, throws a quick little out. Oh, and Johnson is by him with the wheels. And that's just a case there where Johnson just out-athleted another man. A nice juke move right there, and that's the risky play when you play man coverage in that type of situation. No one over there to help the defender after the juke move, and a huge gain with the yards after catch for the River Kings. Did a little cha-cha slide by his defender. We're in Corpus. Let's say Cumbia. <laughs> Fair. 
Reed trying to direct his teammates here as Flanagan's going to be in motion and go opposite side to the left. And it's going to be handed off to Bright. And three Tritons get to him before the line of scrimmage. Do not <laughs> do not let your emotions get out of control, Tritons. No, you definitely don't let that happen right there. But a great job by the Tritons. We've seen them struggle with the run all day so far, but right there at the D-line, flowing with the ball well, not allowing the offensive lineman to get to the next level. And a great job by there, swarming on the ball and making the tackle in the backfield. Shamari Wallace has been having a pretty good game, but standing over Bright, and I got very concerned a flag was coming out. Reed's going to go back under center. With under five minutes to go, they've got a score here. He drops back. The blitz is there. Take it back over the 25. Alasakis getting home. The first time the defensive line is able to get into the backfield and make a sack happen. That all starts with Nick Smith, the linebacker, blowing up the running back and allowing Chase Alasakis to have enough time to get around his offensive lineman and make a play on Reed. Great two plays by the defensive line for the Tritons and now a very long third down opportunity here for the River Kings. Four minutes to go, it's third down and forever. What will the River Kings come up with? Quick throw long, broke up and intercepted! Tackled from behind, returned all the way to the River Kings 15. What can't these boys do? Swatted into his teammates' hands. What a play by number one, Jordan Seminat. First of all, great coverage by him, staying with the receiver the entire way, but then having the wherewithal to swat that one out of the air and just right place, right time for Fabian McNichols, standing right underneath that ball. He gets that one, runs it all the way back up to the River King side of the field. Now, great field position once more for the Tritons offense. We hear about it all the time, defense helping create points and opportunities for the offense, and that's a great example right there. We are offensive guys, but defense does win championships. You're saying we're pretty offensive? <laughs> Someone's got to be. Rather it be us. All right, so the Tritons again. Hunt facing a blitz, has to roll right. Yeah, good decision to throw that one away as he was being barreled down on by Neal. And just a great, smart decision, like you said, Words getting that one out of there. <laughs> hey, I was not an English major at all. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> What's always surprising to me, too, is we've seen the Tritons now extend a big lead in both of their home games during the regular season, and still starters remain out there because we don't see a deep roster played by Coach Chavez, it's a lot of the same guys. But that's why it's so important to keep guys healthy, keep guys in these contests. Can't have everyone getting suspended off of dumb penalties. Here's a pitch to the left for King. Bounces off the wall and into the end zone. Hometown hero. And he's doing his dance in the end zone and for good reason. Great run by him, set up by great blocking on the left side of the offensive line. King giving that ball to a fan. Might be his mom. It probably is his mom. But right there, the River Kings stopped playing defense. They thought King had went into the, to the wall and got pushed by a defender. No, King ran into it by himself and then spun off of it and then walks into the end zone untouched. Another Tritons touchdown. And that is always contentious by the defense. They want to say that he was pushed into the wall to call him down, which would have only been a two to three yard pickup. Instead, King dances his way, joining the party into the end zone. But that's the thing, you have to play until you hear a whistle as a defensive player. And right there, the River Kings caught sleeping and it leads to a score for the Tritons. They're gonna go for two again. Now up 58 to 32 with two and a half minutes left to play. This one's pretty much out of reach for the River Kings. 
Hunt has to step up, breaks one tackle and throws it away, but takes a huge hit by two defenders. Yeah, there was nowhere for him to go right there. It is 58 to 32, that's where it will hold. And that's where we'll continue play after a break over on KDF. If you're watching on YouTube, stick with us. Well, we've got flags on the ground now. Maybe some more unsportsmanlike conduct there is. Emotions get really out of control when one team puts it away. Especially in how this game played out when you think about it from the start. You had a very close game all throughout this contest up until the third quarter. And now the Tritons really taking advantage and, like you said, putting this one away. Well, King's touchdown makes that eight touchdowns for the Tritons today. And there is another ejection on the River Kings for unsportsmanlike conduct. And a helmet thrown to the ground. And that's Malik Allen, number 61. We're probably going to see a lot of suspensions in the league report coming up. And uh, unfavorable. He's not going to win any fans with that one. <laughs> Welcome back if you're watching on KDF. We just had a second player ejected from the River Kings for unsportsmanlike conduct calls. And... We had, had two ejections there. Two, two, ejections two on players play. went down there. Okay, so they did not have any great messages for the fans on their way out. A lot of sign language being done by them. I did take that in college. Really? Yeah. Wow. Couldn't hack Spanish. I say, Spanish would have helped you more moving to South oh, Texas. Oh, yeah, now, now I'm trying to learn Spanish again. So <laughs> past Iran is cursing future Iran. Well, at least you knew what he said there going to the locker room. <laughs> I, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. I, I can tell you after the broadcast. Oh, why can't we just say it now? Uh. <laughs> and indeed, Corpus Christi is jumping around for another Triton's win that is impending with two and a half minutes left, leading by 26 points. Here's a little chip by Lundy to midfield. And number eight, who we don't know, returned it. The Tritons trying to take the River Kings to the House of Pain as we get closer and closer to the end of this contest. Great reference. I had to go off at you right there. Thank you. Tritons return on defense now, so again, we can uh, look to the future for the Tritons as they will be playing here on Friday against the Far Phantoms. Again, that is an exhibition because there are only five teams in the league right now. Of course, there's going to be an odd man out each week. And it happens to be Corpus Christi's time next week. And they will be playing an exhibition against the Far Phantoms. But again, that's a great opportunity for those players out in Far getting to come to a stadium, an arena like the American Bank Center, play a worthy opponent in Corpus Christi Triton. It should be fun next week. And after that, the Tritons get to take on the Amarillo Venom again. That one will be on the road. Breed keeps it. Almost fumbles and just hits the deck. And it's been a really great adjustment defensively for the Tritons. They know they can stop the pass, but now the big test has been stopping the run. And this is going to pay dividends throughout the year. Learning how to stop the run, learning how to play a great run offense. And it's going to help them, especially as <laughs> this is a team they're going to have to see again. And one thing they had trouble with last week, or two weeks ago, excuse me, I keep forgetting my time, against the Venom is that they had trouble closing the game. They jumped out to about a 40-point lead, but allowed the Venom to claw back in and make it close in the fourth quarter. We're going to get a procedural penalty here. But that's why this contest was so shocking to a lot of us because we're so used to getting ahead early getting a lot of leads getting a very high powered offense going but today that wasn't the case it didn't happen until the fourth quarter where the tritons really started to get things moving but again that's something that's going to pay dividends as well learning how to play in those types of close situations against really great teams that's going to be something that separates you from the pack moving forward absolutely 
So according to the schedule now for the Tritons, they will play the Venom three more times in a row. Reed had receivers downfield, has to scramble and throw long, and that's uh, going to hit the back wall. But we've got more extracurriculars going on in the backfield. Yeah, that's just the case of an offensive lineman blocking way past the whistle there. No really reason for it. But, again, very emotional contest. People want to play as hard as they can for as long as they can. Let's look ahead at the rest of the league as well coming up here. Well, so far, the schedule only says that it'll be Harrisburg versus Columbus on Thursday in Columbus and of course Corpus Christi versus Far right here at the American Bank Center and then a couple games the following week throw over the middle is good and hit hard Yeah, I felt that one up here. That was a super hard hit, and I don't think he was expecting that one. Well, the clock may be running down, but the energy sure has not been drained on the field. Or in the stands, for that matter. Fans still into this one. As we get closer and closer to the end of this contest. Coaches are feeling it, too. They're feeling a little loosey-goosey down there and excited to head into the week with a, another W and stay undefeated in the AIF. There's no better way to start off your week than with a W. Trust me. And fans are being instructed about where they can go meet the players, so we encourage you all to come out here for a game this season. The Tritons still have a couple of home games left and will play here this week and then again in June. Of course, there are going to be very few games through the month of May in the American Bank Center. For any military or first responders in the 361, not just in Corpus, but the entire 361, come out next on Friday. That's a military and first responder oh, awesome. night. So we're going to have a night to honor you and everything you help do in our community. Might as well come enjoy it here at the American Bank Center. Good, wholesome fun where you can talk trash to the opposing team. And learn sign language. <laughs> learn sign language. You know, we learn something every day here. We learned that the Triton's mascot was robbed of his Triton today. Reed throws over the middle. It's caught for a touchdown. Almost ripped away by Seminat. Yeah, right there, the receiver just holding onto that one all the way to the ground. That's more of a moral victory there with that touchdown. But nonetheless, a great play there. Cuts this lead down to 20. And while I was amazed that the mascot does not have his Triton, we did hit the one minute warning. So they're gonna go for two, of course. Down 20 again. I never got to finish telling you about Reed. So when he, he left Ohio State after two seasons, when Urban Meyer came in, he wasn't getting the playing time he used to have. Two-point conversion's no good on the pitch. And so Reed transferred to the same school that Jeremy Hunt went to. Wow. Finley. So they are well aware of each other. So Reed was there a few years before Hunt, but they both played in Northwest Ohio. Wow, you, were, you weren't lying when you said it was really a small Ohio world. Ohio is the capital of football, I'm telling okay, you. Okay, yeah, that's where we're just going to end this broadcast early, folks. Do you know where the uh, NFL Hall of Fame is? Canton, yes, I'm well aware. <laughs> that does not mean anything about the quality or levels of football. I don't know, man. <laughs> no, we talked about this last time. No one mentions Ohio when they're talking football. They mention California, Florida, and the great state of Texas. Well, uh, my good re friend Richie Perez here can tell you that I talk about Ohio way too much at work. Well, as you should. <laughs> <laughs> as an alum, you should. It's like, what sentence doesn't start with, you know in Ohio... You had D in front of everything? No. no. Ah, okay. At least you don't do that. No, no, no. That's, it's written on the charter, though, the Ohio State <laughs> University. I'm, I'm just saying. Hey, there's another onside kick. 
Knocked out of bounds smartly by the Tritons. Grimsley on the tip. Tip drill. That's yeah, a great job by Grimsley. They're just understanding the situation. All he has to do is tip it back, and that's just like the ball going out of bounds. Good job by him. That'll give the Tritons the ball with 46 seconds left. They just need to move the ball forward to keep this clock rolling. And they were in this position last game as well and ended up scoring and giving the ball back. And the fans are loving it. They know the Tritons will stay undefeated here. Protect your house. Grimsley and Plummer in motion. Hunt facing the blitz. Gets away somehow. And now taken down and throws it. I believe they're going to call him down. He lost a shoe. I think it's broken? No. That'll stop the clock on that one. Well, Another for the injury for Cedar Rapids as well. Yeah, defensive lineman came up limping there. He's on the floor now in the bench area. Not looking too good for him. Well, it's going to be a tough bus ride back to Iowa for the Cedar Rapids after this one. I'd say it's very quiet, wouldn't you say, after a, a loss? Yep, it's going to be a quiet bus ride home. You're not going to be watching many movies. You're going to have your headphones on, hoodie on, and trying to take a nap. It's not too much talking going on after a loss like this. 39 seconds. Hunt looking, looking. Oh, and a big hit as the ball meets Grimsley. That's a big one for number 21 on the River Kings, Darius Arrington. And Grimsley is still slow to get up. He took a shot there like you were saying, and he's someone the Tritons cannot afford to lose. If need be, I think players could take a rest having an exhibition this week. Now, take my words with a grain of salt. I'm not a coach. The issue just becomes how deep is the lineup to let everyone take rest. Correct. Know? We did have five roster changes for the Tritons today. As I mentioned, the, the rosters do change on a weekly basis. And I'm sure the River Kings will have to figure it out after their quarterback. Sullivan went down with an injury in the first half. I don't even see him on the bench right now. It is going to be third down and 10. Triton's trying to just finish this one off in the final minute, but the ball has to move forward for the clock to run. Now he's got time. He's going to put some air under it. It's going to go out of play. Intended for Langford. Well, the thing is, I don't think they're trying to end it so much as they're trying to score again. Coach Chavez knows how important getting more scores is, especially when we talk about the points for it. You're absolutely right. Well, fourth down now for the Tritons. Haven't been able to move it on this drive. Only 10 seconds has come off the clock so far. Eight touchdowns thus far for the Tritons today. Langford in motion. It's going to be a handoff, but King really had nowhere to go. Uh, flopping and flailing like their Magikarp out there. Hope everyone's okay. I think so. But you kind of wish maybe that was the third down play. Take some more time off the clock because now the River King's going to get the ball and True. they're going to try and put it in the end zone to cut down on this lead and just make this look a little more respectable. True. As uh, some fans have seen enough. They're going to go get line photographs. Yeah, they're going to get line. Yeah. Yeah. 
I will say, Iran, someone here on the broadcast comment did say top five football states, Texas, Florida, Georgia, California, <laughs> with Ohio and Pennsylvania interchangeable. <laughs> so I guess top five, I'll give you Ohio. All right, I'll meet you, uh, meet you downtown for an uh, adult beverage and we can t discuss it. Reed gets blitzed. Throws across his body, but he's got his man wide open, but it's dropped. And that's just been the summation of the River Kings' second half. We played so well at the start of this contest, we just couldn't finish it out. That's number nine right there. Robert Major, wide open, dropped that one. And he was just trying to do too much with it before he had the ball. And he had the first touchdown of the day, I believe, for the River Kings in the first quarter. It's been relatively quiet since. We haven't really called his name too much. Well, the River Kings haven't led since late in the second quarter. It was 14-7 to until the Tritons scored with 20 seconds left before halftime, converted the two-point conversion, and never looked back. Well, excuse me, they did go back and forth in the third quarter. I have a bad memory. There's Reed scrambling out for the first down and out of bounds around the 22 with nine seconds left. And if you're Reed... With the way this game's gone, I don't think you want to risk yourself getting hurt, especially with Sullivan out right now. In that situation, just go out, go down. You do not want to risk injury here. Down 20 with nine seconds left. Nine seconds to go. Reed's going to be in shotgun now. Over the middle, he's got Flanagan. Blown dead with two seconds left. Yeah, in that situation there, the defenders for the Tritons just trying to hold up Flanagan, not let him go down or out of bounds to try and keep that clock rolling and get closer and closer to the end of this contest. I'm trying to see who the River Kings will be playing next according to the AIF schedule. the Columbus Lions. Last play of the game to the end zone. Broken up. Tritons win it 58 to 38. And that's a way to end it. Stellar defense that has capitalized all afternoon. Uh, without a doubt there yet, McNichols come over top, tip it just like we've seen all night. And your Tritons win it with a final score of 58 to 38. Excellent outing again for the Corpus Christi Tritons. As they stay undefeated and we'll get a little break from league play as I mentioned. So. I am personally inviting you to come out to the American Bank Center on Friday to see the Tritons take on the Far Phantoms and what should be another exciting game to see the Tritons excel. Hopefully the mascot has his Triton again so you can see it. <laughs> TJ, any parting thoughts? A great win, a very hard-earned win. You had a Triton.